ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. We are in Orangeburg, South Carolina at Oliver C. Dawson Stadium on the campus of South Carolina State University for MEAC action between Morgan State, who comes in winless, 0-1 in the conference, South Carolina State's Bulldogs at 0-2 in MEAC conference play 1-3 on the season. And in the booth, along with former NFL quarterback Jay Walker, who the, the traveling man we ought to call him this week, I'm Eric Clemens, thanking you for joining us on this Friday edition of college football here on ESPNU. And we talk about teams, Jay, that need a victory in the worst kind of way to turn their confidence and momentum around. For Morgan State, new coach Fred Ferrier, at least he had the interim tag removed, has a quarterback that he's trying to glean and help learn and lean into the position and maybe come away with a victory. Yeah, because Fred Ferry's background is on the offensive side of the ball. And the offense for Morgan State, they're just struggling right now. They're not getting points done. And what they've done, they brought in a very highly anticipated transfer quarterback by the name of Elijah Staley. Now, what they want to see from him, he's got to have some production. He brings size to the equation. Six feet, seven inches tall, 245 pounds with decent mobility, a rocket of a left arm but they need to see that translate into points and productivity on the football field to really jumpstart this Bears offense. Morgan State only averaging 4.3 points a game this year. In the last game they played a couple of weeks ago, they scored 17, their only points of the year against North Carolina a and On the other side of the ball, South Carolina State, of course, led by the alum 16-year man Oliver Buddy Pugh. And he always brings good defenses along with him, but his young offense is struggling here and there, too, and, and some mistakes may have caused them some early victories. Yeah, you know, what they're saying around here is the more things change, the more they stay the same. Buddy Pugh's teams are always going to play hard-nosed, grinded-out defense. They're no different this year, but the offense has always been the big question mark here in Orangeburg. So they're going to Dewan Ford, who's been started there all season long. He's played very good at times, but you got to put points on the board. If they can just come up with the ways to put up 18, 21 points, this could very easily be one of the better South Carolina State Bulldog teams. We talked to Coach Pugh a couple of weeks ago when we had them here on ESPNU, and he wasn't sure yet what he had. He wasn't sure what kind of things they could do offensively or they couldn't do offensively. Now he's a little more confident about his team, but he says, hey, guys, we got to go out and get it done on the field, and we need a win in the worst way in this conference game tonight here at home. Look at the uh, series history between these two. South Carolina State <laughs> dominating the series. So far, Morgan State won the toss, and they elected to receive. And that's Tyler Scandrett who will kick it off. It's coming down short. It'll be fielded at the 14-yard line along the near side and taken out across the 25 up close to the 30-yard line where Morgan State's Bears will take over first and 10. Again, we talked about it. This is a team that was shut out in its first three games, losses to Towson, Albany, and at Rutgers. They do score 17 against North Carolina A&T a couple weeks ago. Late, but, uh, Some, you know, late points. Whatever. Late That's points. Why you got to get in this game like this. You got to score early and hopefully often for them. And there's your quarterback, Elijah Staley, and the big... Number there, seven picks so seven far picks. in those four games. Including this pick six versus North Carolina a and He's got to play within the system. Staley in quick bubble screen going to the far side that time is incomplete. He was looking for Monte Poteet, one of the leading receivers, and the fifth-year senior is a guy that they're going to rely on a lot in this game. And Poteet's one of the guys that has to get it going. He's their best playmaker at the wide receiver position. Quarterback's best friend is their wide receiver. They need Poteet to get the football in his hands. And on second down, rolling out. And Staley threw that one high. And let's talk about the impact players, of high and incomplete, I should say, impact players for you on this well, side. We talked about Poteet, the wide receiver. How about Herb Walker? That's a name many people in the Middle East Athletic Conference are familiar with. Came in and lit up the conference, all conference running back in 2014. Dealt with some academic issues, but now he's on track to graduate as well as an injury last season. He's a good one. And Darius Leonard, Deshaun Taylor, uh, we're going to be calling that name a lot today, both of those young men. And on third down, the quick hitch pattern is complete to Poteet, but it will be short of a first down as he picks up only six. 
So, as they used to say, you're on third and ten. You, you don't want to throw the six-yard pass unless he's in space and you're sure he can pick up the other four. Yeah, but that's something they're used to down here. Three and out from the South Carolina State defense, establishing right away that this defense is no joke. And we also saw the game plan for Morgan State. They did not attempt one running play during those first three. They plan on trying to air it out. We have a flag down as Urantzo punts it deep to Traquan Dubose, who lost the handle on it a little bit. And let's see who they rule it. They rule it. Morgan State has it. But we do have a flag on the play. And let's see them figure this one out. So we have a muffed punt and a recovery by Morgan State on one end, but a flag. Uh, that was thrown back at the 32-yard line. And it looks like South Carolina State is indicating that it will be against Morgan. So the illegal formation negates the turnover on the muffed point punt by Traquan Dubose. And so Dubose will get a redo and go back deep to receive this punt. And Luke Uransel will kick it all over again back to Dubose, who is standing deep at his 30. And what's, what's Morgan State's record this season? Zip and four. Teams that are 0-4 make those type of mistakes. Middle mistake, jumping off sides. You make a good play on special teams, but it's all for naught. I snap this one, a little better punt, and fair catching it over the shoulder. He might have misjudged that one a little bit was Dubose. 39-yard punt, no return. So South Carolina State will take over on offense. And we talked to a few officials around here, and everybody around here seems to think that this game right here tonight on ESPNU might be the first ever game ever in the long football history of South Carolina State played on a Friday night. That's, that's saying something. That's saying something. Trying something different. You know, you're playing on national television on Friday. I just think the key is high school football is pretty big in this area. And I know they got the factory, old W. Wilkinson, right down the street. And that time, we had the handoff to Trey Samuel. That time, he picked up two yards from Tyrese Nick. Tyrese Nick was the quarterback on that first down play, showing something a little different. Actually, that one lost two yards on the sweep to the near side. And DeWan Ford now back in the game for the second play from scrimmage. Uh, he's a good one. He, yeah. he's, gonna, he's going to be a good quarterback. He can make all the throws that you want. They like to be a little bit more vocal as a leader, but he's a guy that can hurt you with his feet, and he's got a nice live arm. Ford setting up a screen near side, and that one is blown up right away. It's flying in from the secondary was Malcolm Harley, number 23, and as soon as that one was caught by LeBron Morris, the shoulder pad was against the ribs. They're saying, hello. Yeah, when you're a quarterback, you have to do a better acting job on a screen play, on a screen pass, and he didn't sell it at all. So that allowed Harley, the cornerback, the ability to come in and put a big hit on the running back who had his back turned to the defense. Two plays so far for South Carolina State, minus three yards. So it sets up third and long, third and 13 from their own 28-yard line. Ford throwing deep near side and has a man out at the 42-yard line. Demontrez Burroughs, one of the receiving leaders, 15 yards on that one, and they'll move the chains on a key third down play, and he's one of the impact players as well. Yeah, the wide receivers have to step up for their quarterback. Burroughs is the guy that can make it done. He's got nice size, 6'2", 200 pounds. He really gets it done, and DuBose the sophomore. So if these young guys can step up, that'll be good. And for Morgan State, Carl Garns, two-time all-conference player, NFL prospect, he's just a go-getter. And on first down, a little delay play is blown up. And then that one's a loss of a yard. Trey Samuel not finding much room to run early in this game. Rico Kennedy was the one who brought him down. And their defensive coaches say Ian McBurrow and Rico Kennedy are as good as any linebackers in this conference. We'll see. Yep, they're young. And I, I would, I'd make the argument, I don't know if they're better linebackers on the other side of the ball tonight. <laughs> South Carolina State's got a great linebacking core. Empty backfield. Three of the first four plays for the Bulldogs have been negative yardage. 
Look at this man-to-man -man coverage. Win your matchup if you're a wide receiver. You have to get excited when you see nobody deeper than five yards from the line of scrimmage. And they're blitzing, so throw it in. Got a man. And that is Demontres Burroughs once again. And Burroughs won his man-to-man -man matchup for another 15. Move the chains. That'll put the ball into Morgan State territory at the 44-yard line. As a quarterback, you have to anticipate you're going to get hit. And this is a great job by Dewan Ford. He knows where his protection slide to. He knows who the hot receiver is. Gets rid of the ball, accurately thrown. That's when you become a pretty good quarterback, when you can stand in the face of pressure, know you're going to get hit, and deliver a strike. Defensive coordinator Ernest Jones says this team leaves the middle of the field open a lot and blasting through a hole. He is gone. That is Trey Samuel in his first positive rush yardage of the day. Goes all the way to the house. 44 yards. You're going to live by that zero coverage. You can get burned by that zero coverage. Nobody in the middle of the field. Everybody on the line of scrimmage. And Trey Samuel found a crease and really made Morgan State play. So they're trying to do a little run blitz, gap blitz. Good job getting to the second level by Patrick McNeil, the guard. And Trey Samuel with the speed to finish off the run. A little simple run off the left side, and he goes through untouched for 44 yards. And the extra point is good by Tyler Scandrid. Six plays, 69 yards. The Bulldogs strike fast. They lead it 7-0. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Friday night football, Orangeburg, South Carolina, South Carolina State. Boom or bust on that last drive. Couple 15-yard pass completions and the 44-yard touchdown run by Trey Samuel to give the Bulldogs a 7-0 lead here in the first quarter. You don't see that often. Starting running back, also on special teams. I like that young fellow, fifth-year senior. Show off your athleticism. Let him know you can play offense and special teams. Tyler Scandrid, he's it up. He's going to kick it deep to Manasseh Bailey. And that was William King, 22. And King brings it up. And it's smacked down hard. Morgan State will take over and try to get something going on offense after their three and out. And here's a look at the uh, programs. Both of them old established programs. Morgan State winning four MEAC crowns, but 19 of them in the CIAA when they played in that conference. And South Carolina State around a long time as well. Yeah, we'll say, we talk about the MEAC, South Carolina State perennial contender. Morgan State, not so much. They thought they were turning the, turning the tide a couple years ago under Lee Hole. Since then, they've not been able to find it. Herb Walker off the right side, and Walker is brought down after a game of about three. But we have a flag on the play. Might have been some early movement on the right side of that Morgan State line. Sorting it out, trying to find the culprits, and we're having plenty of discussion trying to figure out who it is. There are two fouls on the play, both on the defense. Offside, defense, number 92. That penalty declined. Personal foul, hands to the face. Defense, number 92. 15 yard penalty. So not only is Tiberius Cravens offside, he uses his hands illegally, hands to the face, and so that's two whammies against the defensive end, the fifth-year senior out of uh, Austell, Georgia. So first down, and they move it up 15 yards at the 39-yard line. And on a nice play fake in the middle of the line of scrimmage, Elijah Staley was swinging it out to the near side. And he was. You have to complete that pass. And a college quarterback, that's, a, that's built in. You know, play fake, you get it, you go down the line, you get it to your wide receiver in open space. What I'm seeing from him early on when you watch film, where's the touch? He's a thrower. We talked about the big arm. He can throw the football, but you have to put some touch and finesse on those throws.
Eric Harrell was the intended receiver on that play play clock winding down and now the blast play right up the middle picks up two so it'll be third down and long as Herb Walker carried that one into a pile of uh, maroon or uh, deep red shirts if you will and this is a you know, tough matchup you know Walker can do it you know once upon a time in his career they were they were can pairing Herb Walker Jr. to Tariq Cohen. Their numbers were very similar early in their career, but we see what Cohen's gone on to do in the NFL, and Walker's trying to get back to that form. On third down, pass comes to the near side, and breaking a tackle on that near side is Dalen Baldwin, the true freshman, and he picks up 15 yards on the play and could have been a lot more if not for a save and tackle. And, and, and that's what Staley brings to the table. That was a long throw from one half to the other, Got it out there in a hurry. That ball went a long distance in a short period of time. That's when he used his big arm to his advantage, getting the ball to ball went quickly. And here's Walker. And Walker gets off the right side for two before he smacked down hard. Darius Leonard will be calling that number a lot tonight. Number 10. NFL scouts are looking at him. We were talking to one earlier. Yeah, they're down here. They like what he brings to the table. Tremendous size. 6'3", 235 pounds, and a high football IQ and can run like the wind. And we've seen him play a little bit more inside linebacker this year, but he projects very well as an outside linebacker in the NFL. Coming near side and smacked hard again, this time after a pickup of three is Herb Walker once again. And that, Walker brought down by Kendrick Gathers. That was the play that makes Darius Leonard special. Playing inside linebacker, Watch him track down that ball carrier there. Herb Walker can scoop. But you're going to see Leonard coming right there in the middle of your screen. He's looking, looking. Okay, becomes a foot race. Meets you down the line of scrimmage. Hard hit delivered on the running back. Nice instinct from Darius Leonard. Leonard left the field. And now a back shoulder throw, and it is caught. On the near side at the 21-yard line, Dalen Baldwin once again for 18 yards and move the chains, and Morgan State getting something going. Yeah, Baldwin seems to be the guy. They said he's going to be a really good one, just a freshman. But this is a nice back shoulder throw by Elijah Staley. See him just zip it out there. That ball is moving. Nice concentration. Able to secure one foot in bounds in the football. Devondre Powell, the cornerback on that side, playing with a cast. On his left hand, he just had surgery for a broken hand earlier this week as that run by Walker picks up two. So they may come back to that matchup a little more simply because of that. They try to take advantage of it. I think if you're going to move the ball against this Bulldog defense, because Morgan just didn't have the offensive line to do it, they're going to need to attack the secondary. There's a look at Powell, a big cast on the hand, ninth play of this drive. Going off the left side and still trying to fight for yardage is Herb Walker. Walker graduated in May with a degree in sociology, a grad student now. We talked about his injuries and things earlier and how he started his career being comparable to a guy like Tariq Cohen. So they expect some big things from him. Yeah, in this year. What I really like what you said, graduated. And so you take a negative situation when it cost him a, a year on the football field and now he's playing as a graduate student. That's turning things in the right direction, turning around. Third and four. And now Walker flanks his quarterback to his left and off the fake. Staley keeps, breaks a tackle, and will pick up first down yardage and then some inside the 10-yard line. No flags. That'll set up first and goal for the Bears of Morgan State, who continue the march. That's just a big boy running a quarterback read, calling his own number. They're looking for him. They see him, but they get arms on him, but you can't arm tackle a 6-foot, 7-inch, 250-pound quarterback. Not able to wrap him up, and Staley picks up the first down, keep the drive alive. Throwing a quick pass down the seam. Kendrick gathers there on the coverage. Or Chris Adams, I'm sorry, 33 in there on the coverage. One of the backup safeties is in there to bat that one away from the intended receiver. So it'll be second and goal. This is, I go back down to number 85, Baldwin. Talk about the freshman. He's had some good catches going against a cornerback with a cast on his arm, 6'3", 195. I take advantage of it. Going against a 5'8 cornerback. Give him a fade route. 
Well, delay and Walker has no place to go on that one. He is slammed down and slammed down hard. That's Big Shaq. Shaquille Crouch, number 50. 6'5", 390-pound nose tackle, tackling a 5'7", 190-pound running back. That's got to hurt. <laughs> so third and goal as they lose a couple on that play. Spot the ball at the 10. They've converted a couple third down plays on this drive. Of course, if they convert another one here, they get it to the end zone. It is third and goal. Play clock inside of five. Staley gets the snap. Going end zone. Picked off. Picked off at the one yard line. And another key turnover. As that man, Deshaun Taylor, the linebacker, the Mike linebacker, falls back into coverage and comes up with it. A key turnover for the South Carolina State defense. Finally. Tomorrow, the Paul Bunyan Trophy will be on the line at the big house. It's Michigan State and number seven, Michigan, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC, also streaming live on the ESPN app. First down and nothing doing for Trey Samuel this time, who has been hit or missing that one. He is met by a host of defenders in the backfield on that run, which will lose at least three yards. Yeah, it's called it a loss of three on the play. Rico Kennedy, number 28, one of those linebackers, was back in the backfield and blew that one up before it even got a chance to get started. That's the benefit of all the zero coverage that they play, just more men than they can block. You can hit them for huge losses in the backfield, but you can also get burned, as we've seen South Carolina State do already tonight. Juan Ford rolling out of pressure. He had a flag down in the backfield. As his intended target was Juan Caldwell, and it's incomplete. Robbie Stevenson, backup offensive lineman, called for the hole that time, so they'll back him up half the distance to the goal. And so South Carolina State moving backwards on this drive a little bit and getting within the shadow of their own goal posts. So after the penalty, second and 22 now. Let's see how Morgan State does, trying to play a little bit of zone coverage, so not willing to play pure zone, playing two-man. Ford setting up the screen and nothing doing. As a host of white shirts over there that time, LeBron Morris. And they lost another yard on that play. A little, little football one-on-one, one-on-one. Mm. When they've got, like, man coverage on, you don't want to call a route where your receiver has his back turned to the defense because he can't see where the guy's coming. So they're playing cover two man, which means you're going to have two safeties high and everybody locking up. You call a screen pass to your running back on man coverage, he's got to turn his back to the defense. That's why you see so many wide receiver screens in today's college football landscape compared to the traditional turn your back to the defense screen. Brandon Griffin on that tackle. Five of the Bulldogs' eight plays have been for negative yardage. And Ford going deep, down the middle, up the grass, and incomplete. It looked like the intended target, Jermaine Baxley, came down with it for a second, but lost it when he hit the ground. Or it might have been stripped away. This was a, just throwing the ball up for grabs. And you don't mind this as an offensive coordinator because had it been intercepted, it would have been just as efficient as a punt. But you see here, Baxley does a good job readjusting. He elevates first. You think he's going to get it, but he just doesn't catch it cleanly. And they were fortunate that ball wasn't intercepted. Carvantre Ravel was back there deep in coverage and others. And that one rolled on a couple shoulders before it finally hit the turf incomplete. And this is Tyler Scandrick with the play clock winding down. I don't know if he got it off. I don't think he did, unless a timeout's been called. And Oliver Buddy Pugh not happy. Number nine, half the distance to the goal, 
So a delay a game as the play clock ran out. So they're going to have to run this one again and back up the line of scrimmage a little more. And Mike changed the special teams. Now you go for priorities. Yes, you're going to go for a block now. Go for the pump block. Most punters need 15 yards to get it off. They're at about 12. See if you can get a block. Line drive punt. Taking William King back. We have North Line Town. Big block there, and King spinning off tackles. King breaking inside the 30, and finally forced out of bounds at the 18-yard line. But remember, we do have flags down on the play. 41-yard punt and a 27-yard nifty return by William King. Okay, so just a sideline warning was the was the flag there. So we're gonna see Morgan State the beneficiary of a great return. Well, they're still placing the ball properly after that nice return by King and Morgan State in great field position now. One more look at the return. A little bit of a line drive kick and just really one nice cut. Get the vision, take that cut up field. He really was able to weave and bob to pick up a lot of yardage. First down, Staley rolling, throwing off the back foot and there's a lot of contact down there inside the five yard line and flags go down. As he was looking for his freshman receiver again, Dalen Baldwin. Baldwin was being covered by Alex Brown. You want to see arm strength? This is arm strength. Elijah Staley is on the run, kind of going backwards able to get that ball with a low trajectory <laughs> to just get it in the area and that's where you got the penalty that's not an easy throw he made he just flicked his wrist and that ball was flying you gotta hope we say that as a quarterback he's got a hope so he just has to control a little bit better darius leonard brought down eric harrell that time and he picked up a yard off the right side so on second and goal, you know, sometimes they say when your offense is struggling, this is the worst place on the field to be. You don't have as much room to operate. I think they have to throw it. I don't think they're going to be able to run for a touchdown here. Find a matchup, and I keep saying the freshman ball was having a pretty good night so far at the bottom of your screen, one-on-one -on -one matchup. Staley stays on his feet. Does he stretch that ball into the end zone? Or are they going to call him down at the one? They'll call him down. At the one yard line, what an effort. Using all six foot seven inches of that frame to try to stretch that ball over the goal line. I mean, they snipped that play out, but it was just the frame. Too big of a guy to bring down. I mean, they've got this play figured out right away, but he's such a load to bring down. Let's see. Hit. Touchdown. Uh, I think you have to call that a touchdown. He's extending. The knee is not down. Right. Now, he does lose control of it, but Morgan recovered that ball in the end zone. And I agree had, with you. I control, think that's a touchdown. When it broke the plane, that's a touchdown. At least from this angle, no knee touched as he stretched that ball out over the goal line. And, of course, once it breaks the plane, if he's not fumbling it as it gets to the plane, it's a touchdown. One more look. That's, that's in real time, but... I think if we slow that down, we had a pretty good look where the knee was not down. So I don't think that comes into play. On the hand, He's knee not down. That's now, a touchdown. I think when that knee touches, that ball is over the plane of the goal line. I think they're going to overturn this ruling and give the young quarterback, Elijah Staley, a hard-earned touchdown. Well, you know, we always have to give the what if. Did the ball cross the plane? Could we see it? It looked like it did pretty clearly, but did the ball cross the plane? Is there enough to say that the ball did cross the plane? And that's what I'd like to see. I think it did. Let's, think, let's look at this with that in mind. Oh, did this the, should be the angle. 
This should be the angle that can tell us, and they can't piece it I together. That's touched that. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't come out until it hits the yeah. ground across the goal line. So it's not even a fumble. It's a touchdown, it's a touchdown. because it yeah, crossed the plane. They said they had that play sniffed out, but that's when you got a six foot seven, 250 pound load back there with momentum, he wouldn't be denied getting into the end zone. But they really needed that. You talked about Morgan State's offense averaging 4.3. Is that a GPA? <laughs> or is that, or is be a, that it'd be a great GPA, <laughs> but uh, I tell you, especially after marching down the field, 13 plays, 69 yards, and coming away with nothing on the pick deep in the red zone, uh, yeah. actually in the end zone. And uh, to get the ball back in good shape and then convert and get a touchdown, that would give a big, big boost and of confidence to Fred Ferry. When we too. talked to, the, to Fred Ferry, they were excited about this game. Most people don't get excited to play South Carolina State because the defense is so good. They were excited because they're saying, we're playing a game that we think we can go out there and win. After having such a tough non-conference schedule, they said, we need to play somebody. We're on film. It looks like we got a chance. And right now, it looks like the Bears are rising to the occasion. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Third down. Okay. <laughs> Well, we spoke pretty confidently. What? <laughs> I thought he extended that ball about a foot into the end zone. It certainly looked that way from this amount. Of course, we'll talk to the replay officials afterward and see what they were thinking about when they allowed the ruling on the field to stand. So third and goal now. And here's Harold. And he goes in for the touchdown. No doubt about whether he crossed the plane. And Morgan State takes advantage of great field position and is in position now to tie this game up here late in the first quarter. Another small running back for them, Thunder and Lightning. Carroll, 5'9", 195 pounds, able to slide far enough down the line of scrimmage to get to the end zone. And trying the extra point is Luke Duranzo. And your answers. extra point is right through, and we have a ball game. 7-7 seven, seven here in the first. Back in Orangeburg, South Carolina, we are tied at seven. MIAC action. And both teams in desperate need of a win, tied at seven with just over two minutes to go in the first quarter. Alex Rea kicking this one deep. And fielded two yards deep and knocked down hard. On a short return out across the 15-yard line is Xavier Burson. And South Carolina State will take over. The ESPN app is a fan's best friend. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You'll get access to scores, news, and highlights all season long. Download the ESPN app to start streaming right now. And Dewan Ford and the offense coming out. 7-7 ball game here. And what does that do for the confidence of a, a team against a good defense like this, even if you do have a short field to get that touchdown that you have? Play together. So the defense is going to be excited now. The defense feels like if we can control the battle of field possession, field position, then our offense can put some points on the board. And, and that's the problem. Remember we talked to Coach Pugh a couple weeks ago before they played North Carolina Central, and he said, I need my offense to get out of the way and let my defense win football games for me. Well, moving backwards and having a punt and giving Morgan State a 30-yard field position to get to the end zone, that's not the offense getting out of the way. One-yard run on the design quarterback keeper by DeWan Ford. Second down, and boy, met hard right away by Jai Franklin. An all-conference defensive tackle. On that run play, it goes for little or nothing. Franklin's a high-energy guy. Clinton, Maryland, transferred from Old Dominion University, and he's a guy that one of the strongest guys on this defensive line from Oregon State. You talk about this defense and making big plays because of their philosophy. They came in 14th in FCS and tackles for loss with 32 coming into tonight. They have six already in the first quarter in this game. Deep down the near side, intended for Demontres Burroughs. That one knocked away on the back end by Dante Small, a true freshman cornerback out of Union, New Jersey. Paramus Catholic High School there. 
And so they force a quick three and out and talk about momentum shift. Yeah, look at the pressure again by Franklin. Just runs through the would-be blocker. Puts hands on the quarterback. That's when you know he's there. Forces him to get rid of the football. And Zy Franklin showing you why he's one of the better defensive linemen in the MIAC. Cliff Benjamin going to punt this from just outside his own end zone. And a fair catch signal for by William King. 38-yard punt, no return. And again, Morgan State will have excellent field position. This offensive line for Morgan State has gone through a lot. They've lost at least a couple starters who are out right now, so they're trying to groom a young offensive line. This is the first game since Towson that their second projected starting unit has been able to play together, and that might make a big big difference tonight. Yeah, I, mean, I call it a small lineup because, uh, I mean, Allen's not 385 pounds. We've got to get that corrected. Uh, but they, 285. Yeah, they only have one guy over 300 pounds on the offensive line. You don't see that often in college football, but they found a way to get it done on the last drive. And on the rollout, Elijah Staley going to the far side and hit hard that time was Brian Gentry, 6'3", 210-pound junior, and he was smacked down by Alex Brown. But yeah, when it's not an accurate throw and it turns you around, that's one of those ones where Coach says, hey, catch it anyway. You're going to get hit anyway. But he saw the hard hit coming and took his eyes off the ball, not a well-thrown ball. But the good ones make that catch and take the hit anyway to help out the team. That went incomplete as Browns hit and knocked it loose over on the far side. On second down, here's Harrell. And Harold stacked up immediately. Roderick Perry, big number 91 in there, along with big Tyrell Goodwin. And I'm sorry, Shaquille Crouch. Also in there on it, the really big guy. Well, Crouch is a guy with the size and defensive line coach David Blanchard says Crouch can be special. Say, so although he weighs almost 400 pounds, the big fella can move. So that'll do it for the first quarter. Interesting going on in this MIAC contest here in South Carolina. 7-7. We're about to move to second quarter action in just a moment. Back in Orangeburg, South Carolina, Dawson Stadium, South Carolina State and Morgan State tied at seven. As we begin the second frame of action here in the MEAC on third down. Staley setting up the screen. That one jumped on immediately. It was almost intercepted. Now the ball is on the turf and it'll be ruled incomplete. And guess who? He already had eight tackles in the first quarter. Darius Leonard right there again to blow things up. Yeah, he sensed the play, sniffed out the screen pass. And able to blow it up right away and disrupt that play single-handedly. This is why NFL scouts like him, the instincts. He's going in for a rush. Wait a minute. They're trying to trick me. Find the ball carrier. Not allow him to make the play. He put that big left mid up to try to snag that one one-handed. He came close. But incomplete. So Luke Uransel going to punt. Traquan Dubose is sitting back deep. A little rugby-style line drive is fielded by Dubose, and he'll slide down at his 16. It's Backstage Pass Week on ESPN to give fans a behind-the-scenes look at what's unique. I tell you, what's unique about here is these little houses. They call them VIP and kennel dog houses. I've not seen this anywhere where people actually get the rights to a house to tailgate. Yeah, a tiny house. So they a take tiny a tailgate, house. you go around the corner, and, oh, what do Whoa, you see there? <laughs> This is the Hill House. They were the first ones to buy one. And Mrs. Hill, who treated us to some uh, food, some nice yeah. snacks there, says, hey, I was an all-world basketball player here for South Carolina State. Just make sure you mention that. Yeah. And so I did. And she told us to show up for the post game. So keep the chicken wings going. We'll be there for them after the game. So out of the empty backfield, Dewan Ford looks for Quan Caldwell. And again, this unconventional seat defense. Coach Pugh told us he's never seen a defense on any level that plays with the philosophy of uh, defensive coordinator Ernest Jones from Morgan State, leaving the middle of the field open most of the time and just daring you to try to beat them in one-on-one -on -one matches. Well, Ernest Jones comes from the SWAC, and in the SWAC they like to do that. Our cornerbacks are better than your wide receivers. We'll get to you by number count. He's brought that philosophy with them. 
here to the Midwest Athletic Conference. Look at this. Nobody deeper than six yards from the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and they blow up again. You can see the fan on the left of your screen pointing at the yellow holding flag, and that's usually the area holding on the edge. Demontres Burroughs freed up his teammate illegally there I guess yeah, they on had the him confused he's gonna come on the left side of your screen towards the end and didn't really secure the block and right there you're gonna see the defensive back try and turn and go get him he grabbed the jersey there with the tug he had him for a while and they called him for holding pretty easy call for the officials to see and that was weird you know they, they had so much pressure on the pocket they didn't realize it was a quick handoff and Samuel was getting ready to hurt him again but you know, Samuel about shows some speed then. All the zero coverage that they play, everybody so close to the line of scrimmage, there is no second level. If you get past the first wave of the line of scrimmage, then you can hurt this defense for huge chunks of yardage. Forward after the penalty. Oh. Same. At least the Morgan State player <laughs> saying it was dropped, but Juan Caldwell is ruled having made a catch so far. Take one more look at it. They seem pretty certain that this ball hit off the turf first. Yeah, it bounced. And the officials got it right. <laughs> See, don't, don't do that, young man. He, he's going to the sideline. I caught that ball, coach. And then we just saw clearly he didn't catch the ball. But the receiver's never going to tell you they didn't catch it. That's it. He convinced Buddy to take a look at it. Now I wonder what, what, what do you do when your buddy Pew and this young man told you, yeah, I caught it. Take a look at it. And when he sees the replay, he didn't. So I, I want to see Buddy Pew's face after this because I don't think he caught it. But I'm 0 for 1 tonight in a major way. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, from our angle, and we are, we are way up here in the booth, looking at that replay, it looked like we got a bounce there just as he was bringing it in. Oh, look, ball's leaving. It, it's off the turf. Kind of ricochets against his chest. I think right there you can tell pretty clearly. Hit the, hit the I certainly think if he did catch it, there's not enough there. To prove that he caught it. I mean, in other words, if they called it a catch, I don't know if it'd be enough there to prove that he didn't. And since they didn't call it a catch, I don't think they're going to overturn it by looking at these replays. Hey, we but thought we saw a touchdown. We thought we saw a touchdown. <laughs> so I'm going to stay out of that. <laughs> you know, like, like, Come on, you're usually like, like way Richard better Price, than I am. Yeah, like Richard Price said, who are you going to believe, you or, or me or your lying eyes? My eyes have been lying to me. Says. Now, buddy, you go back to the young man and say, hey, man, don't lie to me like that again. <laughs> that's what I would do if I was a coach. Like, look, all I receivers think they caught everything. Well, that's, I believe you. You made me burn a timeout to take a look at something, and, and you didn't catch that ball. And this is the game, but I think it's probably one of the good angles right there. You see it skip clearly. There, that's not a catch. He can be ready to go for it and challenge it. So third and 13. Play fake. Stepping up in the pocket and forward. Has a man down the seam and overthrew his intended receiver, Demontrez Burroughs. And there's a flag on the play there. And will Morgan State be called for hitting a defenseless receiver? Downfield. Yeah, I mean, Burroughs clearly gave himself up, but I don't know if the defensive back had enough time to react and stop. I mean, it was a crossing route going towards him. He was preparing for the hit. 
Burroughs kept going, but he just gave himself up. Burroughs appeared to be a little shaken up on the play, but now walking under his own power seems to be fine. This, this is the part where I say it's football. Quarterback made a bad pass, was setting him up for a headache, and the defensive back didn't launch, I don't believe. There are two fouls on the play. One on 18. Holding. Offense. Number 51. Unnecessary personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense. Number 32. Those penalties offset. Replay third down. Got to be disappointed if you're Morgan. Morgan State on the personal foul aspect of it, but two teams struggling. He's, he's, he's crossing the ball, floats, gets away from him. I mean, he was coming over. That's Charles Carl Garns was coming over to make a tackle. Tough call. So they'll replay third and 13. Four off the play fake, looking far side. And in and out of the hands of a diving Jermaine Baxley on the far side of the field. So once again, Morgan State's defense will send the South Carolina State offense back to the sideline and stop them from mounting anything in their possession. So they'll punt it. They'll get Morgan State the ball once again in good field position with their return man standing deep. William King on about 50-yard line. And down, still on the field, was Jermaine Baxley. He stretched out for that last pass attempt. He may have landed awkwardly somehow. Baxley, the junior. Waynesboro, Georgia, Burke County High School. Going to be attended to by the training staff on the uh, sideline here. Hopefully nothing too serious. And now in punt formation. Cliff Benjamin should strike this from about his own three. William King standing back at his 49. So... Barring a booming kick, Morgan State could find itself in great field position once again. To come after it, and they get it. Morgan State with the block. Provontre Revel with the block, number 24. And the Bears come up with a big play on special teams getting the block. And they have it in great shape. It'll be spotted at the eight-yard line of South Carolina State. Just great effort. I rebel. Speed realizes he's the unblocked guy. He's come really getting it and blocks that ball cleanly. Good job by the special teams of Morgan State and really coming in here believing they can win this football game, making good plays on special teams. Deontay White made the recovery. And now. Coach Ferrier is furious because they get the turnover and in all the excitement appears that one of the offensive players forgot to get on the field in time. So they have to burn a timeout. Now some great traditions in and around college football and courtesy of our AT&T field pass, we show you one of South Carolina State's longest running traditions, the Bulldog Walk, including the players and the marching 101 band walking all the way up to the stadium before every home game. Kind of taking a shot at FAMU because when 100 is just not enough, <laughs> you need 101. Morgan State's third consecutive drive starting in Bulldog territory. We talk about playing with the short field. First and goal off the block kick for Elijah Staley. And the Morgan State Bears offense. And some nice moves as he gets to the hole by Herb Walker. Pick up three before a host of maroon shirts bring him down. So it'll be second and goal from just outside the five. 
I think, call it spotted on the five. I think you run Staley again. You know, because the thing about Morgan, both the running backs are, are small, under five and nine. None of them weigh over 200 pounds. Your, your running game in this situation becomes like Cam Newton of the Miak. <laughs> Give the ball to Big Staley. Quarterback draw. Bubble screen action on the far side, and that one in and out of the hands of Amante Poteet. Poteet might have had a little room had he been led a little bit more by that pass. Instead, it is incomplete, and it'll set up third and go. Wow. I'm really surprised you don't take advantage. Use what you've been given. And a quarterback with a huge frame they saw earlier, they can snip out the play. Even if South Carolina State sniffs out the play, he's such a load to bring down moving forward, he could probably get in the end zone or close to it. Third and goal. Bailey firing, and that one short. He was throwing into double coverage on the far side. Probably fortunate that one wasn't on target, as Alex Brown was one of those over there in coverage, and that's incomplete. And they'll be going for a field goal under pressure to Deshaun Taylor, the Mike linebacker, on the blitz. And this is Luke Duranto about to attempt a 22 yarder. Duranto, one for two on the year on field goals, and that one straight through. It's good. So off the turnover on the block kick, Morgan State's Bears have their first lead of the year. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Kraft Macaroni and Cheese, the part of parenting that's impossible to mess up. And there's Luke Uransel hitting the 22-yard field goal. Alex Rea handles kickoffs for Coach Fred Ferrier and the Morgan State Bears with a 10-7 lead here in the second quarter over South Carolina State. And this kick is a high booming kick and it'll go out of the back of the end zone over the head of Xavier Burson. And we got some little uh, extracurricular activity going on at the 40, but the officials break it up. And South Carolina State takes over. Now tomorrow, we'll have two big week six games for you on ESPN at 3.30 Eastern. It's the number 13 Kings taking on the rival Knowles. Then it's over to College Station for number one Alabama, squaring off against four and one Texas A&M. As always, both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. So South Carolina State, we talked in the open about offensive struggles. They have struggled. Last three drives, only 19 yards, and nine of their 13 plays have been for no gain or negative yardage so far in this contest. Look, all 11 jerseys close to the line of scrimmage. And there is Trey Samuel who has blown up in the backfield. Jai Franklin, the big all-conference defensive tackle, was in there to blow that one up for a loss of four. If you want to beat a team like this, you have to have a passing game. And you have to have the confidence in your passing game. Every time you try and run the ball, there are two or three white jerseys that are there in your backfield. So what do you do? You have to keep an extra blocker in there, shift the formation, max protect, and your wide receivers have to win the football. They are daring you to throw the football. What Morgan State is saying right now is, South Carolina State, you can't pass the football. Look at this. That's everybody for the defense you see in your screen right there. Seventh tackle for loss that time by Jai Franklin. Second and 14. Got to get rid of it quickly. Oh, and they do on the far side incomplete. That's what they want to do. When they bring that type of pressure with that look, force the quarterback to throw it early, create miscommunication between wide receiver and quarterback. You know, if you settle for a long fade route, then the defense wins. That's what they want you to do. And right now, Ernest Jones is dialing up some defense, really confusing this Bulldog offense. A couple of guys came in unblocked on that last play. So now third down and 14. And again, South Carolina State struggling mightily with this defense. Low snap. Ford stepping up in the pocket and going far side. And it is incomplete as he was attempting to find his receiver, Quan Caldwell. And once again, a three and out. Carl, Carl Garns was there on the coverage. So 
and you see the difference. I mean, the pass defense, I mean, they've really gone up there, and they're going to continue to do that. But, you know, second in the conference and turnovers gained, they're really becoming more aggressive. And it's been a mindset. You know, they say their mindset is put the ball down and go play. Their D coordinator says, I'm going to put you on the field to go out there and make plays. You chase down the football. And South Carolina Let's State yet to figure it out. Well, strike this from his 10, William King is back deep to receive and drifts back and waves them away from this one. So Morgan State takes over after the 36-yard punt. We'll be back. Morgan State taking over again, an excellent field position at its own 44-yard line. First and 10 for Elijah Staley, a quarterback, and handing what a the ball off. And that is taken down. Deshaun Taylor gets in the backfield. And that's a five-yard loss as they go back the other way. And it looked like William King might have been the brawl carrier that time. Morgan State playing with the ball of the first time all season long with the lead. After the loss of five, second and 15, here's Staley rolling out and has a receiver. They'll get just beyond the original line of scrimmage, Dominic Trigg. And Trigg, a 6'1", 195-pound redshirt sophomore out of Tampa, picks up eight on that catch. So it'll be third down and much more manageable seven yards. This is when the Bulldogs like to bring pressure, particularly with their linebackers. And the pass on the far side is completed. Will it rule it a catch? They will say he was down by contact as he hit Torrance Little, the fourth wide receiver on this roster. We'll get some playing time tonight. The sophomore out of Richmond picks up eight, and I believe if they rule it as a completed catch, it'll move the chains for first down. They're saying incomplete now. Got to complete the catch to the ground. Let's see. I like to call out the field. No catch. You know, you go down. You said when you leave your feet, you have to be able to show the football to the officials. He couldn't show it to the officials. And whether or not that was an interception, did that ball hit the ground? Yeah, we're going to take uh, we have a penalty. Up. Flag down before the punt. I tell you, it's a false start. And Luke Urantzel will be backed up another five yards. And he's punting deep to Traquan Dubose, who now moves up to his 20 yard line to receive this one. And so far, South Carolina State of Lane has not been able to solve this defense. The rugby-style kick will bounce and roll down where Morgan State will down it at the 24-yard line. Can the Bulldog offense get something going after that 38-yard punt? We'll find out. Welcome back, Orangeburg, South Carolina. Dawson Stadium, Eric Clemens, Jay Walker with you, South Carolina State. Been unable to solve this Morgan State defense on their last three or four possession. And here is Ford carrying outside. And the quarterback keeper goes for good yardage for 12. And that's been one of the most successful plays they've run the last three or four possessions. Recently, Morgan State continued to be aggressive. So they've been with a little misdirection. And they can't find it. They're attacking the line of scrimmage. Can't find the quarterback with the ball. Good job by Dewan Ford calling his own number. After the 12-yard gain, here's first down. And that is LeBron Morris. And LeBron Morris is hit and knocked back the other way by Jai Franklin. We've done that a lot tonight. Okay, coach, I'm going to put you in the offensive coordinator's chair against this defense that leaves the middle of the field open and plays press man-to-man. -man. What kind of plays do you need to see 
as for South Carolina to kind of negate this thing. In the passing game, you want crossing patterns where guys are running across the formation. You can do a little pick or rub play. But I'm sending a deep guy down the middle of the field. Defenses hate to be vulnerable when they leave the middle of the field vacant. Even if you get the incomplete pass, you sent the warning shot, they will have to ease off the pressure. And South Carolina State is yet to challenge them in the secondary, so Morgan's going to continue to just play all this man-to-man -man coverage. One second down, four, going to the far side, and that one well over the head of his intended receiver, Juan Caldwell. I don't know if Caldwell was even looking for it. I've seen it a couple times, and I feel confident saying this. DeJuan Ford doesn't know what he's looking at right now. So he's thinking, hey, we're going to convert, pull off the running game and do the quick pass. But when you've got a cornerback that's in your face playing bumper run coverage, not bailing, you don't go for the quick hitch. That's not an advantageous route for the offense. And I just think Ford is very confused right now with this look that he's seeing from the Bears defensively. Third and 12. I love this. As a quarterback, give me that. <laughs> I'm, I'm throwing the ball to my best matchup, and I'm going to make you pay for it. And they're coming with everybody but the kitchen yeah. sink, and the pass over the middle is incomplete. And once again, Morgan State's defense comes up with a stop and will force the punt. Traquan Dubois was the intended target. You know what else you do? You move the pocket. See, they're attacking for the stationary quarterback to be five yards deep. Roll them to the left, roll them to the right, run a little rub play. Oh, I'd have some fun against this one. They're, they're going to figure it out, though. Morgan State's living very dangerously and right now. Ernest Jones on defense, the coordinator, is getting away with it. But there's some yardage to be gotten. Last five possessions and the upcoming fifth punt for South Carolina State. And William King is back deep. Will call for the fair catch and get it going down to his knees a 39 yard punt we do have a flag on the play so let's sort that out so they'll walk them back 10 after the end of the kick. And back in 2014, Morgan State, 6 and 2 in the MEAC under first year coach, HC Lee, first year head coach Lee Hull. Ferrier was his offensive coordinator. Five way tie for the MEAC conference title. All teams were 6 and 2, including South Carolina State. And versus number 18, Richmond, they'd eventually lose in the first round of the playoffs that year. And another look at the five-way tie. And in the competitive conference, you expect as much. Not like that. <laughs> that was uh, crazy. They just they happened to get the one tie break scenario they had, which they could win. They got it. That's why they were given the bid to the FCS playoffs. And Hull was a hero there. I mean, think about it. Seven and six. Were they seven and six or that seven and five? Six and two in conference, and I think they didn't play some of the top teams in that tiebreak scenario. And everybody wants to know, was the bear around for good, or did he just come out the cave to get something neat? Or were they going back into hibernation? Far side, and it is complete. First down yardage, a pickup of 16 as he finds Dominic Trigg on the far side. And Coach Fred Ferrier, Morgan State offensive coordinator and head coach, had the interim tag removed in December of 2016. He was a former Kentucky State head coach. And Rensselaer Polytechnic has seen his football knowledge spread amongst their program. Coming off the near side, Walker once again. Not much room at all being established uh, by the Morgan State offense in the run game, but somehow they've been able to get it done. Yeah, have you ever been to Kentucky State? No. Man, nice trip up there. Kentucky okay. State, you go through there, and get to go through uh, Frankfort, Kentucky down there, you go to Lexington, Seattle's horse farms. I know I'm off topic, but every time <laughs> I hear Kentucky State think about the thoroughbreds, I'm thinking about that drive there. 
On the near side of the field, he hits Deshaun David, 6'3 junior out of Washington, D.C. And picked up five on that play, so it'll be third and manageable. Third and four for Morgan State. And these South Carolina State fans here at Dawson Stadium getting a little restless with their team. I mean, the offense has been three and out. Defense has been matching the intensity of Morgan State, but crucial third down here. The Bears have only rushed for 25 yards on 16 carries. Third and four, they're going to throw heavy pressure. And down the middle, it is caught. And it'll be good enough for a first down. As again, he finds Deshaun David. And that'll be enough to move the chains. This is using your height to your advantage. Six, seven, in the pocket. He threw the ball over a blitzing Darius Leonard. I mean, off his back foot. You're going to see Leonard's going to sniff it out. He's coming. Watch him throw it over him. Wow. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, that ball's deflected with the wingspan of Darius Leonard. But Elijah Staley, so tall, able to get that pass off. And the handoff off the right side. And they try to move the pile a little bit with Herb Walker. And Walker picks up four on first down. So, again, with Elijah Staley, young, developing quarterback, they want him to manage the game. Don't lose it for us. Just go out and do the things we ask. Don't put the whole program on your shoulders and just play within control. Nice, easy control throw down to the far side as he hits Amante Petit. And I think for him, you know, transferring in, and I was a transfer in with high expectations when I got into Howard. You buy into it a little bit, and then you realize, hey, these guys are pretty good. You know, so right away you have to earn the respect of your teammates. And I'm sure Staley came in thinking, I'm going to be the best football player on the field. I'm going to dominate. Well, not so fast. There's some really talented guys in this conference and on your team. So I think once he learns to respect the conference and his opponent, then he'll play within himself and his natural ability will take over. So Morgan State takes a timeout to talk it over on a crucial third and one. Again, the Bears with their first lead of the season. 10-7 here with 5.20 to go in the second quarter. They opened the season with a loss at Towson, 10-0. Tough A loss. game that they dropped a, a, a touchdown yeah. pass in. Then they uh, play a ranked Albany team in FCS and lose that one, 26-0. Of course, you'd expect against an FBS team like Rutgers out of the Big Ten, a 65-0 loss there. And then a couple weeks ago against A&T, a little bit better, but 49-17. So really, one of the tougher schedules of any team in the country to start out with and really nothing showing for anything offensively and finally beginning to get things to work a little more with their projected starting offensive line intact for this game first time since the Towson game and on third and one this is Walker off the left side I don't think he made it he is going to be stopped short I lost a yard on the play as well and so this will be a big fourth down they'll probably punt it away with the way their defense has been playing I certainly would. But on the road, a big conference game, needing something, who knows? Yeah, but I still say run the big quarterback, short yarded situation. We're in the Carolina, you know, if you're playing the Carolina Panthers, you know Cam Newton's going to get it. Tell him pick a hole and get it. Fourth and one. No, he didn't get it. Well, I, I, I got to question that. I have to question that. And that was Eric Harrell up the middle. And Harrell. The way they spot it does not look like he got it. He had to get to the 45-yard line. They're spotting him at about the 46, and that is short. Harrell is 5'9", 195 pounds, and he's got to make a cut to get there. The short yard situation, it's all about mass, moving the pile right there. He can't move the pile. Darius Leonard trips him up pretty good. And that's a good spot, the elbow hit. Right at the 46-yard line. So now a field position shift here with the turnover on downs as South Carolina State gets the big stop it needs. And now the Bulldogs take over at the 46, first and 10. And remember, they've been able to, to do very little since their first possession. Ford going far side. Has his man, and he held on to it somehow. And that is uh, Demontres Burroughs, 24 yards. And somehow he brought that one in against complete coverage by Corvon Trey Ravel. It's man-to-man -man coverage. So what you're thinking is you want you to make the catch and you can really hurt him. And almost a touchdown. 
But great Is that a one-handed catch with the left? Not a good angle there, but I think he brought that in with his left hand. Just thinking if Travell doesn't hold on for dear life, that would have been a touchdown. And forward that time on the play fake is beat up in the backfield, Ian McBurrow. One of the leading tacklers of those young linebackers of the Morgan State Bears defense. And that's another tackle for loss. That's a four-yard loss. That's what they want to do, get you in obvious passing situations. Yeah, so he'll go back to move the pocket, roll the quarterback out, simplify the field. Don't make him figure out where all the pressure's coming from. Keep it in front of him. Second down, here they come. Ford going deep down the far side. And that one, is that intercepted? It is. Intercepted on the far side of the field. That one picked off by Carl Garns, the strong safety. And another key turnover for Morgan State. Late in the first half, the Bears will take over. Wow, one-handed. It's okay. As it was called on the field, Carl Garns comes up with a fantastic one-handed interception. But was it? They're reviewing. See if he had control through the catch. If the ball actually hit the ground. Fantastic job. One-handed. I think they're taking a look at that ball. How did it get over to his hip? I think becomes a question. But we tried to look in between the commercial break. Couldn't see anything that said one way or the other. the announcement of the decision after the review. And it looks as though it might be ruled incomplete. And that's a preliminary indication we're getting here is that it will be ruled incomplete. You might have heard a little bit of the sound there after reviewing. They're just finding out where the chains belong now and so forth. It'll be changed and ruled an incomplete pass rather than an interception because the great effort by Garns, the ball hit the ground. After further review, the ruling on the field has been changed. It's an incomplete pass. The ball hit the ground. It will be third and 14 from the 34 yard line. So Garns, a great effort, but didn't quite control it going to the ground. Ball hits the ground and gives South Carolina State another chance. Third and long, third and 14. And again, they'll do it with an empty backfield, which has been a mostly dangerous proposition for trying the to, South Carolina State offense in this game. Yeah, they're trying to spread them out so he can maybe see where the pressure's coming from. And he throws over the middle and has his man, Traquan DuBose. And DuBose, a nice catch and run, will be about a yard and a half short of the first down. Make it too short. So it'll be fourth and two. This is that crossing pattern we talked about, or that quick slant. He places it, gets rid of it. He beats his man early off the line of scrimmage. Unfortunately for the Bulldogs, a couple of yards short of the first down. And I think they're going to make the right call and go for the field goal here to try and tie this ball game. And on to attempt this field goal is Tyler Scandrit. And Scandrit, six of seven so far this season. This will be a 39 yard, 38 yard effort, let's call it. And now with the play clock winding down, we have a timeout on the field. Kick off your week five NFL Sunday with ESPN at 10 a.m. Eastern. Our Sunday NFL countdown crew, Rex Ryan, Charles Woodson, Matt Hasselbeck, Randy Moss, Mort, Shefty, and host Samantha Ponder. Is that enough names there? Anyway, they'll have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and preview each game 
right up to kickoff, and they are quite an entertaining bunch. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. All righty, let's talk about the HBCU power rankings All right. here. Prairie View a and number five, impressive victory when they shut out Alabama State. We'll have to continue to go through these. Mm. Tyler Scandrit. We'll tee this one up from 38 yards. He's five of six, and okay. that snap is high. And they'll cover it at about midfield. And so everything that could go wrong did on that play. The snapper, James Johnson, a senior, they lose 26 yards. And more importantly, Morgan State will take over. Keep their lead. And keep that lead with 228 to go here in the first half. And we had talked earlier where I really thought that South Carolina State could have been one of the best one in three teams in the in FCS football in the conference. They look like a one in three team tonight. I mean, special teams isn't there, offense isn't there, defense is playing well, but this South Carolina State team is not living up to expectation. Elijah Staley swings it out. And Harrell on the far side, I'm sorry, Walker. Walker thrown out of bounds after picking up about five. Darius Leonard slung him out of bounds. Nice swing pass there, and Herb Walker picked up four and finally seemed to have a little space out there to operate within. So it'll be second and six. Coming near side and not much as much room at all. Host of maroon shirts out there including Darius Leonard. Stopping Walker after a two-yard game. But they're starting to attack the perimeter for the first half of this game. They've pretty much been trying to run the football directly at the teeth of the defense for South Carolina State. Now we're seeing them, hey, get Herb Walker on the perimeter. He's a guy that can make things happen in open space. I think the Bulldog defense has earned the respect. Hit her on the near side and finds Dalen Baldwin, but we have a flag on the play. Devondre Powell was there on the coverage. Number 19, ineligible man downfield. Offense, number 84. Five-yard penalty, third down. And that's what I say. Both teams 0 and 4 records, 1 and 3 records. These are mental errors that the teams are making. Brandon Jones was called as that ineligible man downfield. And he is listed as a tight end, a junior out of Salt Lake City. And uh, and so they decline the penalty now and force the fourth down. Wow. So, I would now why would you decline that penalty? Because he, he did make the catch, correct? And he was maybe a yard or two short. Right. Brandon Jones, his coaches, call him the X factor in this game. They line him up all over, inside and out. But if they decline that penalty, he's only about four yards short of the first down. Now the, now the penalty will be accepted. And now a timeout. <laughs> so game came to a screeching halt with about and a half. I know we kept you waiting. Let's get back to those power yeah. rankings. Prairie View was number five. Yeah. Alcorn number four. Looked awfully impressive in the first yeah. half last night. In that, that their first half, they looked like they should have been a top three team. Absolutely. The they were going. They've got it. Lenore's footman's good. Delance Turner's good. Good team in the defense. The defense yes. is legit what they've got there. The number three team, Central. What? A little bit low, people would say, huh? But they're playing football at a high level right now, Coach Mack. Number two, 
defending champs, Grambling. I know Grambling. Y'all should be top, but the number one team in North Carolina ain't team. No, they're, they're playing the best football Howard up at the power. That's next <laughs> on the bubble. Howard University is on the bubble. And so third down and nine. Staley throwing far side, Ooh. and that one his receiver went one way. He threw the out. And the only man waiting back there for it was the defensive back ready to make a catch. Alex Brown, if that ball's lower, Alex Brown is running the other way with it. He was looking for Manasseh Bailey, his speedster, at the wide receiver spot. So Morgan State will be forced to punt a minute 20 to go here in the first half. And the Bears clinging to their first lead of the season at 10 to 7. Back deep is Traquan DuBose, and he, they fake it and hit the receiver on the far side. who has got plenty of room. What a call. But we do have a flag down on the play as well, of course, and a little celebration as well. Might have been Deontay White getting that pass 43 yards on that play. And what a well-conceived play it was, but we do have flags. And the reason why it was really well-conceived because South Carolina State likes to go after punts. You know, they blocked the kick within every game this season. Every game this so season. So you figured this was the time they're going to try and get the block, use their aggressive nature against them with a little special teams trick play, but this looks like it's coming back. Probably for like a formation or something like that. But it was a pretty quick play. There are two fouls on the play, both on the kicking team. Ineligible man downfield. Offense, number 95. Personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct. Kicking team, number 22. This is number 22's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. Both penalties will be enforced. Fourth down. William King got the unsportsmanlike. So let's see if we see the one more look at it. Downfield. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they could have called that on a bunch of them. Yeah, there, <laughs> there were several were guys in the middle. Field. Well beyond that five-yard cushion down the field. Good rugby-style kick forcing DuBose back to his own 25 and a nice open field tackle that time to bring him down. 47-yard punt, minus two on the return. Doing a good job with the line drive kick. Deontay White making that open field tackle and stopping DuBose in his tracks there as with 59 seconds left, South Carolina State gets the ball back to try to do something with it and erase this three-point deficit. They were in field goal range last time, had a bad snap on the special team's play to give Morgan State the ball at the 48 yard line so they blew that one. Let's see if they can get something going in the last 59 seconds with one timeout left. Here's Samuel and Samuel was almost in open territory but a saving tackle right at the line of scrimmage. It might have been George Ramos from the nose tackle spot or Jai Franklin might have saved a big big game possibly a touchdown instead of pick up a five yard. Here's Samuel again, this time not as much room, brought down immediately. And it appears that South Carolina State just going to be content to run out the clock here in the first half. Yeah, they still haven't figured out this defense of Morgan State. Why risk a turnover in this situation? I think they want to go in there and talk about it. If you're going to throw the ball in the situation, be careful of the sack. The sack fumble. I would be surprised if they run a play. Doesn't look like they're going to. 
And that will do it in the first half. And this South Carolina State crowd not too happy. Our halftime score here in Orangeburg, 10-7. Morgan State leading South Carolina State. We'll have your halftime update from the studio after the break. Orangeburg, South Carolina, Oliver C. Dawson Stadium. You're watching the Marching 101 of South Carolina State entertaining the folks at the half. But the home Bulldogs losing this one to the Morgan State Bears in MEAC competition 10 to 7 at the break. Back up in the booth along with former NFL quarterback Jay Walker. I'm Eric Clemens. And I tell you, it has been quite a busy last couple of days in terms of news and notes and yeah. HBCU football. And I guess let's get right to it. Yeah, how about breaking news in HBCU football world? Today, a couple hours before kickoff, Alabama State made the move on Brian Jenkins. Uh, we covered the game last night in their home loss versus Alcorn State. I think everybody in HBCU football world was surprised at the lack of success that Brian Jenkins had at Alabama State. He was tremendously successful at Bethune-Cookman, had an 860 winning percentage, went down there and couldn't get above 500, so they made the move to longtime Morgan State coach Don Hill Ely will serve as the interim coach for the rest of the season. He better win the Classic. <laughs> he better win the Magic City Classic. <laughs> All right, and, of course, big game for your alma mater, Howard against North Carolina Central, division defending MEAC champ. And it's big because you and I, we go around the country. What's the one question everybody asks about Howard football? Are they for real? Are they for real? They went up there for real. So I said, well, ask Bethune-Cookman if they're for real. They beat Bethune-Cookman, but Bethune-Cookman's not North Carolina Central. If the Bison can beat North Carolina Central at home, I think that answers the question whether or not the Bison are for real. And North Carolina Central has – not been quite the same central team. They're young in spots. They're still developing they, they in look spots. A vulnerable. So now, yeah, they might be a little vulnerable going in there. They do look a little vulnerable. That's where you give credit to head coach Jerry, uh, Jerry Mack. He finds a way to win ball games, and he's been able to do that one. But Mike London will not be out coached at Howard. So be interesting to see that contest up on Georgia Avenue. And a big one. Grambling Prairie View, two longtime rivals, a big game. Who you got? Uh, Who you got? <laughs> Don't answer that, Eric. You'll be <laughs> mad. But State, State Fair Classic down there. It's, it's a shame that game's not on television. Yeah. We should be down there calling that game there. They need to realize this game is the best game the conference has. Put that game on TV. The people deserve to see it in the stands and at home. Grambling State led by quarterback Devontae Kincaid, really good. But Willie Simmons has Prairie View A&M doing very well. And I think last time I saw Prairie View play, they shut out. Alabama State, so that was something where you didn't expect Prairie View to have a really good defense. They're showing they can play defense as well, and they got it out for Graham this year. I think that's going to be a fantastic <laughs> game. And the West, again, expected to be a little bit tougher than the East and the SWAC, so we'll see how that one well, that'll be. I'll be scoreboard watching a little bit tomorrow as we listen to the Marching 101. As uh, we talk about the ESPN app, you got the app yet? Of course, come on, man. I'm just, you know, just testing you. Got to keep the, up with the Bison and the, the Nationals <laughs> right now. The app the is the fan's best friend. I got to keep up with my Cubs, too. Stream Nationals. every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You'll get access to scores, news, and highlights all season. Download the ESPN app and start streaming now. We'll be back. Finally, I found out to start the third quarter here in Orangeburg at Dawson Stadium, where Morgan State leads South Carolina State 10 7. And now, time for Give Me Five. Jay, what you got for us this week? I'll start off showing you the release. You know, I would love to play in this type of game. Look at the accuracy of the throws. You're going to play man to man coverage on me. I'm going to hit a receiver in stride and make you pay for it. They need to get some quarterback play in here today. Take advantage of all this man to man coverage. Ooh, that was a tight rope. But Give Me Five, how about this? The five Morgan State legends you need to know about. Raymond Chester, right? Mm. Talk about Morgan State. Nobody could do it there. You remember Raymond Chester, one of the all-time greats. They've got some history at Morgan State. Number four, how about this? Vashante Shanko played tight end for Morgan State, went on to play for the New York Giants, one of the best players there, played for the Vikings. He could really do it. Number three, you got to go with Leroy Kelly, NFL Hall of Famer. You know you're going to make my list. Leroy Kelly's there. Number two, well, let's keep it with the Hall of Fame. And how about... Roosevelt Brown. Mm. Rosie Brown. Talk about a Hall of Famer. And here's the kickoff as it comes down and fumbled a little bit in the end zone. And it'll be down there. Xavier Burson. And now for number one, 
Well, oh, they give me five less. All those Hall of Famers, but you don't say Morgan without Willie Lanier. Would you acknowledge not only is he a Morgan State legend, one of the greatest to ever play linebacker in the National Football League? Oh, yeah, Willie Lanier is a Morgan State legend. And on the bubble, people are going to say, why isn't he on there? Lynn Ford, he's an NFL Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. but you know me, I got something against leaving Morgan State. He transferred out. <laughs> so I can't give him credit. You don't like can't those transfer give, out. Not out. They can transfer in. You can transfer out. in. I got to make room for myself. I transferred <laughs> in. So. <laughs> but you can't transfer out. On first down and going outside of that stack defense is Trey Samuel trying to get the corner. Could not. He's forced out of bounds. And they, they mark that one as a two yard loss. And so another negative play for the South Carolina State offense. It'll be second down and 12. And here's Samuel trying to come near side and nothing doing again. This time Rico Kennedy from that linebacker spot. Carl Garns also back there to bring him down. And he lost six more. And you just can't do that. Look at all the white jerseys around the football. I mean, they're surrounding it unblocked, so there's nowhere to go. Two white jerseys in your backfield, that's not the look you want to have offensively. You must acknowledge it and attack it, but it looks like they didn't make any changes in intermission to their game plan. It could be a long second half. Third and 18 again, defensive coordinator from Morgan State, Ernest Jones, says, we're going to leave the middle open. We're coming after him. We want to get the ball out of that quarterback's hands and make him as uncomfortable as possible. And you, Here's third and long. and you knew it before the before the game happened. Look out. Off the play fake, and he runs out of time. And this time, Malachi Washington, from his defensive end position, comes in to get the sack and talk about an emphatic start for the Morgan State defense here in the second half. Yeah, Washington comes from his defensive end position, keeps him within his sights, and they describe him as explosive. Physical football player from Waldorf, Maryland, 6'2", 230-pound junior. They say he's got a chance to play on Sundays as well. He had a sack and a half coming into this one. Give him another one there as a Samuel was left to block him. And Trey Samuel only 5'9". Has no chance. Another block kick. This one bounding in the end zone and out. That'll be a safety. And Morgan State again coming up big on the kick block. Corbin Trey Ravel once again coming up with a big block. Yeah, Ravel, nice block, but almost had an opportunity to keep it in the end zone for what would have been a touchdown. Instead, they have to settle for the safety. They just come around with speed. That's just speed. Ball goes straight in the air, not able to locate the football. And it took one extra bounce, and unfortunately for South Carolina State, that bounce took it out of bounds. And out of bounds in the back of the end zone was going to be ruled as safety. And that'll give Morgan State a 12-7 lead here in the third quarter. And almost as important, they're going to get the ball back on a free kick from South Carolina State. So a chance to really take control of this ball game. Thanks again to the special teams. And the defense. Those tackle for losses are really starting to take a toll on South Carolina State. And... The special team is playing well, but all these tackles behind the line of scrimmage by Ernest Jones' defensive unit is helping Morgan dominate the battle of field position. Manasseh Bailey and William King are the two deep receivers. They're going to take this free kick off the foot of Cliff Benjamin, who's going to punt it in the free kick. The high one coming off to the speedster Bailey at his 35. Bailey coming near side, seems to have some room, gets the corner. Bailey across midfield and finally stopped as he tried to reverse his field once again at the 44 yard line. A 23 yard return on that free kick. And so, once again, Morgan State, excellent field position as they try to take control of this game. And we do have a flag on the play, which I did not see, so. 
offside. Ticket team, five yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. So, okay. so a five yard penalty from the end of the return gives them more yards and better field position inside the 40 at the 39 yard line where Elijah Staley's going to come and try to march him downfield. Yeah, great field position again. And I give credit to South Carolina State's defense. They've been playing behind the eight ball all afternoon and only giving up the 10 points. And this is Walker who does get the corner on the far side and Herb Walker. Probably his best run of the day picks up nine. He'll be just a yard short of the first down, down at the 30. And that's an adjustment we talked about. No point running at Deshaun Taylor and Darius Leonard. Run around them. Make them go sideline to sideline. Staley there. Okay. You know, okay. This is Walker again. Cuts it back. He comes near side and gets first down yardage and then some down to the 26. Give him four on that play before Deshaun Taylor brought him back. So move the chains first down for Morgan State. A team that had struggled mightily offensively coming into this game. Averaged only 4.3 points. And right now, thanks to some special teams play a couple of blocks. They have 12 and counting. Over the middle as he looked for Avante uh, Petit down the seam, and Petit seemed to have a step. He was covered by Jason Baxter, but incomplete. And it, one thing I noticed about this quarterback, he is big. Oh, he's big, and just a little flick. And he throws it, and a little bit more line drive. That's a little bit too much line drive. You want that throw to be firm with a little bit of arc on it. Stick it in there, but. He just relies on zipping everything all over the field. Staley going deep far side and going up to try to make the catch on that side of the field was Dalen Baldwin, the freshman wide receiver who had a big first half. He was quite busy. But even if he pulls that one in, I think he's out of bounds on that one. Devondre Powell with the broken left hand and all was back there in the coverage. I give Powell credit. 5'8", 190 pounds, so he's given up five inches five to six inches against these taller wide receivers from Oregon State only using one hand but he's played a competitive football game the big third down play just out out of the range that makes coach Ferrier comfortable in terms of field goal and that one on the far side looking down the seam for Manasseh Bailey as well overthrown late in. now a late flag coming in so we'll see how they sort this one out I'm not sure Ferrier knew that there was a flag. He was looking down at the playbook. It was after the plays. This should be some type of unsportsmanlike conduct. Saw some guys chirping. Was it against South Carolina State or was it against Morgan? There's no foul on the play for defensive holding. Four down. Oh, so no foul on the play. I was about to say, uh, Uransel is the kicker that Ferrier is confident in with field goals 40 yards and in. With longer field goals, he tends to go with Alex Rea. And let's see what he does this time, because this one would be a 43-yarder. And it looks like Rhea, number 12, is coming on. To make this attempt. See, I, I don't like this. And the play clock running down. They had a little delay in there where they were talking about an official. Make up your mind what you're going to do. In a close ball game, timeouts are crucial. You don't know if you're going to be in the trail position or the lead position the last three minutes of this game. To have to burn a timeout this early on a field goal try. Uh, and even if he hits this field goal, it's still just a one possession game. Only an eight point differential if he should hit this one. Rhea, so far this year, 0 for 1 on field goal attempts between 40 and 49 yards. This would be a big one if you can put him down by eight. That's why you go for the field goal in this situation. Put him down by eight, which means a touchdown and a two-point conversion just to tie it. I tell you, what I'm seeing and feeling from up here is that this team is extremely confident, especially defensively. Yes. They don't believe South Carolina State can do anything to hurt them. And now Urancel is in to attempt this 43-yard field goal. We saw Rhea out earlier, but now Urancel... And Rhea is the holder. And that one blocked. 
So for another game, South Carolina State gets the block, and big fella Shaquille Crouch might have collapsed the line there to get a big hand up and block it. We'll be back. Back in Orangeburg, South Carolina, Dawson Stadium. South Carolina State coming up with the big block by Shaquille Crouch to turn it over and get it back at their own 29-yard line. On first down, Dewan Ford throws it to the falling receiver. That might be an interception. Demontres Burroughs was trying to corral it, but Donovan Jackson, the cornerback, is the one who actually came down with it to so another Morgan State turnover. Yeah, the receiver slips, and as he goes to the ground, the ball is going to hit off his shoulder pads, and great reaction by Donovan Jackson to pick up the ball that's hanging in the air. For the nice, we've seen the number one-handed wow. plays. Yes. He just scoops that one off the shoulder pad with one hand, and what an effort and then you by know, Donovan Jackson. Is he, is he a cue? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so Morgan State takes over first and 10 at the 33. And Elijah Staley will give it to Eric Harrell. And Harrell off left guard picks up three. I'll tell you what, this is the most impressive thing about Morgan State has been their defense. And they're playing against an offense that had its trouble, and they are making them look like they struggled. Big pass to the outside and has his receiver that time and he hits Deshaun David. I'm sorry, Torrance Little, number 88. He's a red or a sophomore rather out of Richmond, picks up 11 on the catch and spin. And Morgan State moves the chains again. Far side again in the down the same Uncle. call is loose. They rule out a fumble if they do it is recovered in the end zone by South Carolina State and they got it. Devondre Powell is the one who fell on it. Big cast and all. And let's see how they sort it out. Torrance Little was on the receiving end of that and that ball squirted out. He's got the football and trying to do something extra. Leaves his feet down. He could be down. Was that backside down? Was that ball coming out? The replay officials, they've got the work cut out for them tonight. They've been busy. Good concentration, but no, ball's not down. That is a fumble. I think that's a fumble. I think he was snatching it out of there before the backside hit. And what a play, virtually one-handed by Devondre Powell. We told you earlier he just had surgery on that broken left hand. This is, I think we're going to get a timeout for Morgan State. They want the replay officials to have some more time to take a look at it. There's no timeout on the field. First down. Ah, change their mind. You know, Coach Fred Ferrier. Unfortunate turn of events there as South Carolina State gets a huge turnover, and that's Trey Samuel for no gain off the left side. So it'll be second down and 10 after the no gain. And Samuel's been hit or miss a lot. We've seen him get the corner and break loose, and then other times, not much room to run at all against this unconventional Morgan State defense, which has given South Carolina State and quarterback Dewan Ford fits ever since the first possession. Under pressure, Ford gets rid of it and looking deep down the middle, nothing there. As he was looking for Quan Caldwell. But I like the warning shot that you do. So now with that being said, that's a good look at Ernest Jones, was the head coach at his alma mater once upon a time, Alcorn State, been to Notre Dame and Cincinnati, Buffalo, UConn, all those places there. Got to put on a resume also as a head coach at Alcorn, but doing a great job but this defense right here they're playing aggressive they're feeling it and you can tell Dewan Ford I said I sensed it early he doesn't know what he's looking at 
still not quite sure what he's looking at defensively. Looking things over now with the empty backfield as a play clock inside of five. And they get it off. He fumbles the snap, however. Jitter. So another three and out. So, so far this half, in a little over five minutes, we've seen a safety, a blocked field goal, an interception, a blocked punt, a fumble, and another fumbled snap. But not a turnover, at least that time. You see the shotgun pulling out a little early because he knew the pressure was coming. So that won't show up as a defensive pressure, but it was the pressure that forced Ford to not catch the ball cleanly. And another negative play for South Carolina State. And again, the Bears of Morgan State should get the ball in excellent field position, barring a booming punt by punter Cliff Benjamin. And that's a high snap. And that one, too, goes out of the back of the end zone. And that'll be another safety. And guess who was back there? <laughs> Mr. Special Team. Mr. Special Teamer. <laughs> Wow, what a new Corvon, Corvon Trey Ravel. And a high snap, and there's number 24, Johnny on the spot. We'll be back. Corvon Trey Ravel, part of three kick plays, a couple of blocks. And then a bad snap that he was in position to recover, but it was knocked out in the back of the end zone. So the free kickoff after the safety makes it 14-7, and it comes down to King. He's trying to cross his field, and King gets around the corner to the 40, out across the 45 to the 48-yard line where he's brought down. But we have flags on the play as well here. The block in the back. Close call. They caught him a little bit tight down there on the field. I'm pretty sure you're going to call tight end for Morgan State, 86. Block in the back. During the return, block in the back. Return team, number 72. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Tomorrow, the Paul Bunyan Trophy will be on the line at the Big House. It's Michigan State and number seven, Michigan, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. So how about a third quarter with a couple safeties for the scoring? 14-7, but not in conventional fashion as you might think if you're just joining us. Quick pass to the uh, far side and he hits his receiver Deshaun David on that play so now simple passes for the young quarterback short passes easy to complete try to play a little ball control here you try and do that but I think you want to try and tire out this defense South Carolina State's defense been on the field a lot this game and most of the third quarter and get the ball to guys like Walker in space on the perimeter they can make it happen and Herbert Walker gets the corner on the near side and gets it out across the 40. That'll be enough for a first down. This game's been, how would you describe the style of play? <laughs> a little loose. <laughs> We've had some loose moments. A little sloppy, a little loose. Yeah, a little sloppy, a little loose. Penalties everywhere. Defense is flying around. Turnovers, interception, block punts. Not a tightly played game in the words of John Grant. Off the play fake, looking deep, near side, has a man. And his receiver, Deshaun David, had a step on Alex Brown, maybe two, but it was simply overthrown. Man-to-man -man coverage, clean release by Deshaun David. Not able to make the completion. So it'll be second and ten. For Morgan State holding that seven point lead against the South Carolina State team that has struggled offensively. And Morgan State has done just enough. Now, South Carolina State claiming that ball is loose. The Bulldogs running off the field as if they recover a fumble, but the officials have not made a signal yet. That move forward, one of those claiming the Bulldogs have it. And what do the officials decide? I look at the body language of the running back, and Walker got up like he knew he fumbled. 
So we got an official signal. I think so that they're going to call it a fumble down on the field. Damu Ford and backup linebacker was the one who made the recovery down there. The game gets a little bit looser. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. And you see Walker. Boy, Ford just snatched that one out of his hands as he was going down. What a play by Damu Ford to create the turnover. Now excellent field position and now the direct snap. This time to Tyrese Nick, the running backup quarterback. He is a true freshman out of Johnston, South Carolina, Strom Thurmond High School, and trying to give it a little bit different look with the athletic quarterback, number three, Running a couple of design quarterback keeper plays. When the quarterback has gloves on both hands. <laughs> He's in there to run the rock. Not throwing much. You don't expect that anyway. Here we go again on a quarterback draw. And making some nifty moves up the middle through the hole. And I believe getting first down yardage, depending on the spot, is Tyrese Nick before he's brought down by Jordan Cry on the second level. Like the decision to go with the quarterback, the hot hand. Right now, Morgan State hasn't made the adjustment to Tyrese Nick coming in the game. So rather than go back to Ford, who struggled, go with your Wildcat or running quarterback package. Third and very short, and here's Nick trying to get the corner and does. And gets enough yardage down just outside the 30 with the dive. And that'll be a first down, and they'll move the chains. And they haven't done that on offense for quite a while. You know what I like about it? I mean, Nick is a quarterback. You know, this is quarterback. When he gets a snap, he's tucking the ball. He's in running back position right away. We saw him on the first play of the game, the first offensive play for South Carolina State. Really threw me off a little bit. And, oh, they got the backup quarterback in just to give him a different look. And now Coach Buddy Pugh is going with this young man. Now he's going to look like he's throwing, but he pulls it down and keeps it. Going far side and taken exactly. down in the open field. That time after a pickup of three, Eric Alvis was the one who brought him down with a nice open field tackle. I mean, a fantastic tackle. Looked like Nick was going to have a lot of extra yardage. Good job of recognition by Eric Alvis. Nick, very elusive, we can tell from his running skills. But look at this tackle inside out. Textbook. Picked up three on that quarterback run play. And well, unless he shows you he's going to throw it, you can't expect much else, can you? And he keeps it that time and is taken down almost immediately. And we have a late flag in, it looks like, on the That's play. That's a towel. That's a towel. Okay. <laughs> the great With the tackle. tinted booth up yeah. here, I, didn't, I couldn't tell whether it was yellow or not. And yeah, McBurrow made the tackle <laughs> on Nick. It was tired of chasing him around and grabbed his towel and threw it behind a lot of scribbles. You see Nick. So we have a towel on the play. Yeah. <laughs> and now Tyrese Nick comes back to the sideline, and they'll go back to the starter, Dewan Ford, on third and seven. And I'm pretty sure they're going to blitz Dewan Ford right now as he comes back in the game. And nobody covering deep middle of the field. Here's Ford under some pressure going deep. Has a man. Protecting him a little bit better. One-on-one -on -one covers to the outside, and this is just a great readjustment to the ball by Quan Caldwell. As Donovan Jackson got caught in no man's land, gave up the deep ball for the score. So finally, something works for the Bulldog offense. The long pass, 29-yard connection. And the extra point is good. And now once again, we are tied 14-14 here in the third quarter in Orangeburg, South Carolina. So finally, the Bulldogs of South Carolina, get it out here, <laughs> South Carolina State gets something going and get a touchdown 29 yard pass from Ford to Caldwell and get the extra point to tie this thing up and it's been an interesting third quarter to say the least as we get a short kickoff coming down 
on the near side. And this is the speedster, Vanessa Bailey. And Bailey gets the corner. Bailey's still in bounds. Finally, they say he stepped out at about the 48-yard line. So a nice return of 36 yards from Vanessa Bailey. And the third quarter, I said it's been interesting. Uh, we've seen a little bit of everything this quarter. I'm mean, going to start out with the block punt. If you recognize the ball, you can catch that for a touchdown. He does it. That may come back to haunt them. But then you have to block field goal and the interception and a little bit of everything. Another fumble down towards the end zone that gets recovered in the end zone. Bad snap. High snap and then ultimately we saw some football. <laughs> we saw traditional play one-on-one -on -one coverage to the outside with a touchdown that ended up tying this game. And hopping through the hole that time, Eric Harrell. Harrell picks up a yard before his forward progress is stopped. Coach Fred Ferrier. <laughs> That's just the third quarter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two safeties, block field goal, interception, two fumbles, and a block punt, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Harrell again, this time off the right side, and he is smacked down and smacked down hard after a two-yard game. One of the guys there, big Shaquille Crouch. And if I'm a running back, I want no part of a 390-pound man falling on me. Yeah. That's for sure. And that's what those big interior linemen like to do, get their hands on you. You know, Crouch and Goodwin, those guys up front, they're, they're part of the reason that a guy like Darius Leonard can have the success he can, the freedom to run around and make plays. Now this crowd here for the first ever Friday night game at home in South Carolina State history. A little bit more excited with their hometown heroes fighting back to tie on third down. And hit immediately after the catch on the far side and driven down is Dominic Trigg. And Trigg, depending on the spot, yeah, he'll be well short of the first down. Comes down just running a hitch pattern. And one thing you can do if you've got a cast on, you can just run through them on a hitch because it's a stationary target. If it's a moving target, kind of hard to grab them and catch them with just one hand. But it's been a gutsy performance. And fourth down and about two. They're going to punt. And he's, well, he took a long time as he ran with it to get an opening. And the rugby style kick is fair caught at about the 11-yard line where South Carolina State will take over. Now, tomorrow, we'll have two big Week 6 games for you on ESPN. At 3.30 Eastern, it's number... Texas a and Yeah. Quiet 4-1. and one. Quiet. Where a coach is catching a whole lot of heat. 4-1, <laughs> and one, I mean, and minus the collapse versus UCLA. And Alabama, you know, you might think, oh, the quarterback's a little shaky, whatever. It just it doesn't yeah. seem to matter. Yeah, I don't think they're the number one team in the country, though. Mm. If you did a power ranking, mm -hmm. Clemson's playing the best football okay. in the country. I'm in South Carolina. Eric got to make some fans around. And over the middle. And he finds this man, Demontres Burroughs, on the post pattern for 14 yards. And move it out to the 25-yard line. And South Carolina State seems to have found some confidence offensively throwing the football. And that's that shot I told you you have to take. The warning shot down the middle earned their respect a little bit. So I think if you're Morgan State, I, I'd ease off the blitz package, the pressure package, because it seems like South Carolina State's made a couple of adjustments. And they come on a blitz again, and, and this time that. they run right into the teeth of it. And several white shirts are there for the loss of minus three. And I, I want to see if we count the minus or the negative tackles in the game today. They came in again 14th in tackles for loss in FCS with 32 and they have 14 to add to that total tonight. So it is a hit or miss defense, if you will. Taking advantage of an offense that is struggling to find an identity. Dewan Ford looking deep into nobody on the near side as his receiver cut the route short. Juan Caldwell did an out route and the quarterback threw the fly pattern. So it'll be third down and 13. Another situation where you just find a matchup. One thing Morgan doesn't do well, and they've been doing it all game, though, is you get third and long, they like to play cover two man. They like to back up the safeties. They don't play zone coverage that well. 
and recognizing that they're going to stick with their man-to-man -man coverage, everybody up close. You got to burn a defense like this when they're this aggressive. Run deep down the middle and incomplete as he threw it a little bit behind his intended target. Traquan Dupos, number four, and so South Carolina State will be forced to punt. And it looks like Morgan State's Bears are going to have excellent field position once again. That's been the story of the game. <laughs> Morgan State Bears, excellent field position, but still only 14 points to show for it. Both defenses have been challenged tonight. So Cliff Benjamin, who's had an adventurous day punting the football. And the snapper is James Johnson. Gets this one away pretty well. And the fair catch is signal and caught by William King. Let's take a look at tonight's Bringing the Flavor, brought to you by McDonald's. We saw before we came in here tonight that nice crab boil with the crab and the corn and everything going in the pot and that that fella had a large crowd of folks waiting for him to dish it up as well going deep down the far side is Staley and that is incomplete as he was looking for Torrance Little who was well covered on the far side just threw that one away. Morgan State again with this guy. They, they believe in his potential. He's a guy who was formerly out of Mississippi State. They just want him to manage the game, though. They don't want to put too much on his plate right now. Now, when you came in, you were a young player. Did you get everything thrown at you at once? Uh, no, they gradually gave it to me. I thought I knew it, but I really didn't know much. And then looking back on it, I realized I didn't know nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's a tough one. I, you know, I, I kind of said earlier, you can, the coaches can sell you and hype you all they want. Your teammates have to believe in you. And I don't know if the Morgan State team believes in Elijah Staley. And I don't know if he's played well enough for them to believe in. So it was something where, you know, I lost my very first game at Howard University. Coming in there, much, you know, touted, mm -hmm. lost, and I challenged the team. Okay, those of you all that don't believe in me, that's okay. You will sooner or later. Mm -hmm. And then I earned it the next right. week. And then as time went on, you earn respect. Coaches can try and force feed it to you, but you have to go out there and earn it on the football field. Down the seam, he has Petit, but Petit, that just hit him in the wrong yeah. spot, the hand. And yeah, that was a big-time throw. I mean, the ability to stick that seam route in there, Petit, that's where you need a little bit of help in. And that's when, as a quarterback, you kind of go over to Poteet and say, hey, I'm coming back to you. And that's how you earn their respect, and they start to believe in you. But when you just go to the sideline, like, man, you got to drop that. And he's seeing that right in there. Just now, I'm making no excuses, but the ball does come off a lefty's hand a little different. A lot different. You know, and I say that, but when he's your starting quarterback, you get used to it. If you have a backup quarterback, that's a lefty. Oh, boy. And that's a 32-yard punt there. We need to watch that because he's running over to that side of the field and holding on to that ball a long time before he punts it as if they're looking to set something up later, possibly a run. There's no way he can throw the ball after holding it that long. He's got too many men downfield. But if they keep doing that with him having that kind of room over there before he kicks it, they may try something later in the game. So keep your eye out for that one with their punter, Luke Uransel. And he must have held that ball about three seconds before he finally kicked it while kind of drifting over to the far side of the field with really Coach nobody back. threatening him at all. So we'll keep that in our back pockets maybe for a little later. Right now, South Carolina State with the ball inside of 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And the play clock might have beat them before they got that snap off. And you hate that. Turnover, you get possession of the ball in your first play, you take too much time. And we got a little extracurricular stuff going on there down there on the field. We'll see if anything is added because of that. I think they may have broken it up in time. It's, I haven't seen too many games like this in a long time. I mean, it's like, who wants to win this football game? And you almost start to think the team that makes the least amount of mistakes may win this game. 
both doing a good job defensively, but very loose down there <laughs> on the field. Just a little bit. 26 seconds now left in the third quarter. They're still going to blitz him on first down. They don't care. Here they come, and he was hit as he released that one. And the throw was short, but nobody in white saw it, or they might have been able to peel back and make a play on it. And under heavy pressure was Ford. Ford was pressured by Antoine McCray. Leave number 99 coming in there. That's a chuck and duck throw right there. He just threw that ball up for grabs because he did not want to get hit. Actually, it was Cameron Chelsea, 95, who came in there and was the first to jump. And uh, Dewan Ford ducked underneath him to get rid of that ball. Man, he's probably never seen anything quite like this in his worst nightmares. I mean, they have been chasing him all over the field whenever he is trying to pass the football. Curtis Jones, he, he's going back to it. This is an old school SWAC defense. I mean, the SWAC, that's how they used to play. Man to man, show you can beat me off the line of scrimmage. Show me your quarterback can complete the pass. We're going to hit him. Looks like uh, Chelsea, the true freshman, came down awkwardly on his leg after he missed the hit on the quarterback. But he walks off the field under his own power. Let's hope he'll be able to continue in the game. Chesley, actually, not Chelsea, as I said earlier. Chesley from Fort Washington, Maryland. Fort Wash. Friendly High School? The Patriots. Okay. You can tell whose home area is, <laughs> is there. Joe Hayden went to Friendly High School. And on fourth down, is that ball loose? No, they call him down by contact. And Malachi Washington was the one who hit backup quarterback Tyrese Nick pretty hard, coming in uh, virtually untouched. And got him from behind and went for the strip. Washington, we talked about his explosive nature. That ball might have been coming out as he was going to the ground. Whistle would have declared it dead, but that might have been a quick whistle that helped him out. Could have been. I mean, he certainly went for the strip with the right hand as he made and, the hit and, on and Nick. And that inadvertent whistle can, I mean, it stops it, but the, whoever recovers that ball, if it's coming out, that ball's. Oh, that yeah. coming out. Yeah. Yep. And they, although they blew the whistle, I think they're going to get possession to Morgan State. The ruling on the was a fumble. However, there was an inadvertent whistle during the play. The ball will be placed at the six-yard line, second down, South Carolina State. So the whistle happened before. The fumble must be what they're saying. Just a blown one there. <laughs> and Malachi. Look, 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 look at the look by Ferry. Now, what are you going to tell me? <laughs> Let's look at the play one more time and listen for the whistle. No. No. That, that, that's not an inadvertent whistle. The whistle saying you're saying he was down. But. You can recover that. I, I don't think that's what the intent of that's supposed to be. The whistle blew saying he was down, but the ball was out. I'm not, you know, supervisor aficionado, but I do enough of these games to think that. He reaches in it's coming with out. that right it's hand. It's right coming there. out before he hits the ground. And it we, is out. And we heard the whistles after the ball was out on the turf. Right. See, yeah, I think the universal whistle is if you if they blow the whistle before he goes down. Right. This was after the ball was dancing around. And if that ball's not dead, that's certainly a fumble recovery yeah. and touchdown for Morgan State. Well, but at the very least, yeah, you, you give Morgan whistle, State you the don't football. Give them a touchdown. But you give Morgan State the football, the football at the spot of the yeah. recovery. Yep. <laughs> That look on Coach Ferris' face set it up. <laughs> what are y'all trying to tell me? Now they're going to walk over and 
give the Morgan State head coach another explanation here. And he still appears a bit confused by what they're telling him. This song, boy. And the good thing, hey, you got the, the camera, the TV crews here, but before it was always, you know, they would have gone back to Baltimore and said, oh, man, these referees did this and that, and everybody would have said it was a conspiracy theory. Coach Jeffries, who just left the booth, talked to mm -hmm. him. Oh, he, he, he used every trick in the book. <laughs> you know, <laughs> speed up the clock, not cut the grass. <laughs> so, South Carolina State has always been one of the toughest places in HBCU football to get a road victory. There was a fumble on the play. During the fumble, there was an inadvertent whistle. By rule, due to the fumble being during the inadvertent whistle, we must replay the down, second down. I'm gonna go study my book a little bit more. Sorry, so many rules, but I'll just say use football logic. We the game clock to 16 seconds, 16 seconds. <laughs> Well, you heard the explanation by rule. You have to simply replay the down. That takes away a big turnover. At the very least, Morgan State would have had the ball with first and goal. Empty backfield now for Dewan Ford. He fires far side and has his receiver once again on that slant pattern. And getting out close to the 30 yard line is Demontrez Burroughs. And that is the end of the third quarter, a four-point quarter for Morgan State. Very rare. We are tied, however, at 14. We'll be back. Fourth quarter action starting here in Orangeburg, South Carolina. ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. South Carolina State on first down and nothing doing for Dewan Ford, who is swallowed up for a loss. I'm sorry. Are they saying another Gains fumble? Three. It, it, it's loose out there. In the <laughs> words of our good friend John Grant, play is loose right now. And every time you see a tackle, every defense is being aggressive, going for the fumble, going for the strip sack. Fourth down and three now for South Carolina State. And, and you got an explanation of the rule which wiped out that apparent fumble. Yeah, when, you know, I talked to the supervisors and officials for the conference and by rule, whenever there's an inadvertent whistle and no team is in possession of the football, you replay the down automatically. So there was a fumble, but the ball was on the ground, bouncing around when the whistle blew. By definition, you must replay the down. So we understand that ruling on the field, a correct ruling as unfortunate as it was for Morgan State. Nothing but white shirts around that loose football on the field. And if not for an inadvertent whistle, Morgan State has a fumble recovery and a touchdown. So now on the third down run play, uh, Dewan Ford really swallowed up. And now South Carolina State forced to punt. And again, that's been an adventure. William King is back deep to receive. And again, Morgan State should have great field position, barring a booming punt off the foot of Cliff Benjamin, who's had a couple blocked tonight. One snapped over his head for safety. So it's been quite an adventure for the sophomore punter. Low snap, but he corrals it. And this is a high kick. And I believe South Carolina State has it. They do. Coming out of the pile with that one was Cornelius Walker. On special team. So again, loose play. I don't know why he didn't fair catch it, but he didn't. Well, it becomes a matter of we said, I had a feeling the team that makes the least amount of mistakes would probably win this football game. Well, that's a mistake when you don't field it cleanly. And now, see if South Carolina State can take advantage of it. 
So South Carolina State excellent shape at the 37 yard line. And 55 seconds into the fourth quarter tied at 14. Key Miak game for both teams going deep down the field has a man open got it. That's Traquan DuBose and DuBose dives down at the 15 yard line a pick up of 22. Man to man coverage get the ball to your playmakers make the catch make somebody else miss they slide the pocket over a little bit a good job of spinning around the defender by DuBose. This is Samuel. Touchdown. Touchdown. Well, a few times we've seen consecutive positive yardage plays from South Carolina State offensively coming off the big catch, and now we see Trey Samuel find a crease in the Bears defense. South Carolina State regains the lead. 15 yards on the touchdown run for Trey Samuel. When he is hit, he is hit. I mean, he had a 44-yard touchdown scamper earlier. This one from 15 and with the extra point, which is good. South Carolina State extends the lead to seven, but we do have a flag on that extra point. So hold on a second. Both teams walk off. Maybe it will be assessed on the kickoff. But Trey Samuel opened this thing up with a 44-yard touchdown run, and it's been tough going for him, but when he gets a crease, he has done some damage against this Morgan State defense. Welcome to kicker. Defense, number two. 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kick. Carl Barnes roughing the kicker that time. The penalty assessed on the kickoff. We'll be back in a moment. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Well, if you look at the stats of Trey Samuel, Two touchdowns, 58 yards on 16 attempts. Pretty good night. But I ought to tell you something when two of the touchdown runs are 44 and 15 yards. So 59 yards on two runs and the rest negative yardage is the uh, kickoff. And now we have a flag down on the play coming from the referee in the end zone. Might be uh, on Mujahad Frick, a backup tight end and special team. Unsportsmanlike conduct, receiving team, number 86, throwing the punch. Number 86 has been disqualified from the contest. And Frick. Ejected for throwing a punch. And they always seem to catch the second guy. And Frick will have to take an early shower after this one, after being ejected from the game. <laughs> well, you're on the road. He's walking there by himself. Normally they escort you back there with somebody. I've never seen a player walk himself to his own locker room. But take a look on the right side of the screen, number 11, right there. That was a punch. A good job of non-retaliation. Chad Gilchrist was the guy on the receiving end of that punch, number 11 for South Carolina State. And now Morgan trying to come back, and Staley threw that one a little bit early, intended for his receiver, Dalen Baldwin, on the near side. And now Morgan State a little bit out of sync, it seems, their last few possessions offensively. Yeah, it hasn't been there offensively. This has been a dog match to watch. It hasn't been a lot of, <laughs> a lot of good stuff taken on, but uh, 
it's, if you like big plays, it's there, and the big plays are still there. But now this job gets tough for Morgan State after giving up that lead going against this tough defense from South Carolina State. Staley fires, and that one deflected, nearly intercepted. In the secondary, Chris Adams was back there, had a chance. Dalen Baldwin again, the intended receiver. So it'll set up third and long. Pressure coming on Staley. Who is it? Number 10, that's Darius Leonard, along with his partner in crime, Deshaun Taylor. How many games, how many times in this game have we seen a lot of chucking and ducking? <laughs> the quarterback's just throwing it, avoiding the pressure. Pressure and they set up. It's intercepted, and there's a man, Darius Hunter. <laughs> we have defensive play of the year. Bringing the pressure, they're trying to set up that little screen and another chuck and duck too many. You gotta know where you're going with that football before it leaves your hand. Floats it in open space and Darius Leonard makes him pay. Bruce Johnson, the big defensive end, was there to put the pressure on and the extra point is good. And just like that, lightning striking twice. And South Carolina State has taken control of this game because of the all-world linebacker, Darius Leonard, on the interception at pick six. Fine, finally. Buddy Pugh, team was in trouble, but has made enough big plays, especially here in the fourth quarter, to go up by 14 at home against Morgan State. William King, one of those back deep to receive a very short kickoff. Lands in no man's land. It's loose out there. But fortunately, Manasseh Bailey covers it. Of course, you know when that ball travels more than 10 yards, it is free. And South Carolina State's coverage team could have recovered there. And defensive greats, well, they got tradition here at South Carolina State as well. How about Hall of Famer Harry Carson, who was a defensive lineman here in the Deacon, the Deacon, Deacon Jones, Secretary of Defense, and Donnie Shell. You and I both talk. How is he not in the Hall How of Fame? How is he not? I, 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 I don't understand that. And they say Darius Leonard is next. And Javon Hargrave currently playing. The guys you see, Hargrave and Thomas, they're in the currently in the. Well, those are all in the current NFL guys and a couple of MEAC defensive players. Years. One thing about South Carolina State. For years, and you've always known they're gonna have a tough defense. They're gonna have a player that's in contention for defensive player of the year. 21 unanswered points by South Carolina State. But, but how about this, Eric? What we talked about mm -hmm. that the point turned out to be true. You always gonna get that defense with State year in year out. But right. what, what's the question mark? Offense. That always. offense. <laughs> and whatever they have in offense, they tend to be really, really good football teams. And there's Darius Leonard cleaning up once again. And Leonard, the tackle for loss, minus two. He's the leading tackler by far on this team, coming in the game with 14 or 43 tackles. And now he has 15 on the night. And, and like I said, I'm really impressed because I really don't project him as an inside linebacker in the National Football League. But he's a guy that because of his football IQ, he can do it. Can do it with the best of them. Third down and four. Staley coming near side. That one almost picked. As again, he and his receiver, his intended target, Manasseh Bailey, not on the same page. Can I clarify something for you? We're talking about the defensive greats. And so for years, I've always kind of put Deacon Jones, you know my problem with Deacon Jones. Right, right? transferred out. Yeah, so, he can, you know, he's always like honorable mention for an all-time great because mm -hmm. he transferred out. Right. So I got coaches telling me all the time, no, 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 he transferred to South Carolina State from Valley. Well, I just talked to Bill Hamilton, mm -hmm. legendary SID around here. Right. So he told me, like I thought, that Deacon Jones transferred 
from South Carolina State to Mississippi Valley. Okay. In the discussion, all right? All right. Coach Graves, stop it. You, you got that <laughs> clarified. Got it clarified. I did see a Hamilton come into the booth with us yeah. here and tell you about it, so I, I vouch for him. 54-yard punt, by the way, that time. You could do a think about it. We did the Morgan State Legends. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the Give Me Five, you could do a South Carolina State with just defense. Because then you can add Robert Porsche. Right. You, know, you could add uh, Joe Mumford. Look at those pro football Hall of Famers. Marion Motley. Motley. Ah, asterisk. <laughs> asterisk. Transferred out. Come on. <laughs> Let's say, come on, please. Come on. <laughs> So South Carolina State with 11.40 to go. Might play a little more ball control. Here's Dewan Ford keeping, trying to get the corner, and will be forced out of bounds. He'll probably lose a couple. He'll lose one, and it'll be second and 11. One of the reasons I always say South Carolina State probably the toughest road trip in the MIAC because you're probably going to take a long bus ride to get here. Team is going to hit you if they do nothing else. Probably going to go home with an L. And the Bulldogs, even though they're struggling, it's been a fight all game long. This is Bulldog football. They like it when it's a little loose on the field or sloppy, like I like to say. Got him in and there. Samuel gets the corner. And go by. One man to beat coming from across field. And Trey Samuel, 89 yard touchdown. Morgan State continued to keep all men on the line of scrimmage. No second level defenders. For that Samuel run, it became a matter of if, if he catches, if he kept his balance, he knew he was going to have a touchdown. There's nobody in the second level. Once he breaks the line of scrimmage right now, who's going to get him? And he kept his balance. A nice job of downfield blocking by Demontrez Burroughs. And remember, he had an 83-yarder earlier in the game called back by penalty. The extra point is good. And now... It is 35 to 14, and suddenly South Carolina State in complete control. Admit 28 unanswered points for South Carolina State. And we talked earlier, Jay, about gashing. Well, Trey Samuel has three gashing runs 44 yards, 15 yards, 89 yards that time, and literally nothing else. And the one they got called back as well. So he's been able to really increase this defense for big chunks of yardage. But that's the type of game. Remember I said earlier as a quarterback, you know, your percentage is not going to be high, but you're going to hurt them for some big plays, and that's what they did. That's a flag on the play as the kickoff goes out of bounds without being touched by the receiving team. Five yard penalty, re kick. So they'll line it up and kick it again. Again, Samuel, 17 carries, 147 yards in those three touchdowns. And three big gashing plays against this defense. And you think sometimes that those plays might come in the passing game with the way they yeah. put everybody up in the box, but. All three have come in the running game for Trey Samuel, who does have tremendous speed. And you, like you said earlier, Jay, there is no second level when you get us. Once you get three yards past the line of scrimmage, it's a foot race. And so uh, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart when I say we have seen everything <laughs> pretty much in this game. We had a Fake punt, block punts, snaps overhead, fumbles. Seen it all, and then get a little shorter kick again. Fielded by Manassa Bailey. And the speedster gets out to the 35-yard line, the 36-yard line, where 
South Carolina State takes over tonight after Boise State and BYU on ESPN. Stick around for Sports Center at night with Stan Verrett and Linda Cohn from LA. They'll have highlights from both college football matchups, baseball's four division series games, the NHL, NBA preseason, NFL news, and everything else. Is there any more? Sports Center at night streaming live also on the ESPN app. You say Stan Verrett? Stan Verrett. Where do you go to school? You know, I don't I don't remember that. Did he go to Howard? Yeah, he went to Howard. I know he's a New Orleans native. Yeah. And that's where I know him from. He's a Howard guy. Did I okay. mention that uh, in, this, in this game yet today, did I mention that Howard beat UNLV to start off the college football season? Right? <laughs> now you did. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not worth noting that. Three-yard gain that time by Herb Walker. You carrying it off the far side. That we've seen everything in this football game. Mm -hmm. You are not correct. Okay. There's something we have not seen. Okay. A long scoring drive down the field <laughs> like the game true. of football was meant to be played. <laughs> it's been nothing but big plays and turnovers. Throwing far side on a Another strike. Play. <laughs> and almost a spin off the tackle that time by Deshaun David. Picked up 25 yards. And this Elijah Staley does have a big arm. That ball got out there in a hurry. Well, this is his throw. His skinny post just steps into it, zips it. Out in front, almost able to keep their balance for more yardage after the contact. This is Harrell. Still driving those legs, getting it down to the 31-yard line. Pushes the pile for six yards on that play. What's a little surprising about Staley is, I thought he'd be a very active quarterback, running, rolling around, because he was a basketball player. I mean, you're talking about a guy that played Division I basketball when he was down in Mississippi State. So the athleticism is there. But on the football field, he just tends to play a little bit more like Rock. Osweiler than he does Cam Newton. And Harrell with the carry, no gain up the middle. And it's amazing how all the air can come out of your balloon. You're Morgan State, you're, you're, you're looking fine, you're up 14-7 after a couple safeties in the third quarter and suddenly it all goes away. It goes away, you lose momentum and you get down and you know your offense is not going to score 21 points in this football game to get back into it. But they have their chances. I'm looking down the seam, finding Manasseh Bailey is Elijah Staley. Picked up nine. That'll move the chains. I got you. I just figured out who Staley reminds me of. You know, you say Cam Newton. No, no, no. He's more like E.J. Manuel. E.J. Manuel. E.J. Manuel. He's a left-handed version of that. Manuel can run, but really doesn't like to. Pocket passer, big, big kid. Under heavy pressure, throws it up for grabs and hits the ground incomplete. Fighting for it was his receiver, Torrance Little. Hey, let's, let's get some props out. Devondre Powell's been playing with a cast all night. This is perfectly timed. This is how you play jump ball. Wait, time it at its highest point, separate the receiver's hands. When you only got a nub out there playing cornerback with a club there, that's what you have to do. Time it up. And his coach had no doubts that the guy would play and play well tonight despite recent surgery on that broken hand. And now another quarterback out there for Morgan State as they're going with their backup, DeAndre Harris, a 6'3 sophomore. And then you wonder, is that change because of injury or because they're throwing in the towel or because they want to go with the running game a little bit more as we see Harris run on his very first snap? Harris uh, on the season, 6 out of 12, completing 50% off the play fake. Now he's going to keep it. And gets it down, spinning off tackles, gets it down inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal, and DeAndre Harris pretty impressive on that run before he was brought down by Deshaun Taylor. Well, we, we saw South Carolina State struggle with a mobile quarterback when they took on North Carolina Central. They just hit their key so much, and maybe that's what Morgan State's trying to do right now. 
And here's Herb Walker. And Walker reverses field, goes off the left side for two. And Taylor brought him down once again. So, of course, time not the friend of the Bears' offense with approaching six and a half to play in regulation here and down by 21. But they switch quarterbacks to see if they can get some momentum back here and get a score on this drive. They're on the corner route, right. and that went off the left hand of the intended receiver, but we do have a flag on the play as he was looking for Dalen Baldwin. His name has been called a lot tonight. The freshman covered by Alex Brown. So when it rains, it pours for Morgan State. Yeah, just a jump ball situation. Come on. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Go with the no call <laughs> or the let me stop. Been a long night. <laughs> Been a little loose down there with the officials <laughs> haven't had a good one either with inadvertent whistle and a call right there. Looks like they were both kind of jockeying for position there. And is that ball on the corner out thrown up for grabs? And here's Harris escaping it. Throwing in town, intercepted. And there's the man again. Look at that. Let us in. Darius Leonard showing all the athleticism on the interception return. And we have a flag on the field of course we got a flag on the field Eric but it came during the return but defensive players of the year just tend to find a way to be around the football at the right times and I'm pretty sure this will be probably a illegal block during the return but I'm really impressed by the footwork the moves I mean for a bigger guy he's got some moves with that football 6 3 235 we have sideline interference against South Carolina State. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed for the end of the run. They were First warned half. earlier, and so once you get the second penalty, it's a 15-yarder. And what a night for the reigning MEAC Defensive Player of the Year. Two interceptions, 15 tackles. Wow. And we saw an NFL scout here earlier taking Chief. a look at number 10. Saw another one came. Saw, another one came? Yeah, I saw Chiefs, and then we saw Vikings come out as well. So he's on the radar. This is a guy that can play from a school that's known for having defensive players that make it at the next level. There's Lynn, a very high draft grade. I forgot one of those interceptions was returned for a touchdown. So one more look at the second interception. You see him there, just follow his eyes, and as you mentioned, you like you want to see the athleticism. Doesn't go down, nifty footwork, and able to go from defender to offensive player and help his team get better field position to go along with those 15 tackles. Yeah, I think he deserves to cool off a little bit. Yeah, he looks a little gassed <laughs> down there to me, but what a what an evening Darius Leonard has had. And so South Carolina State on second and 10, comfortably up by 21. And here's Samuel staying in bounds. And you might have heard <laughs> the shouting from, I don't know whether that's from coaches or people on the sideline or fans, stay in bounds so this game could be over with approaching five minutes to go. And you know, we don't know if we're going to see Darius Leonard again. South Carolina State obviously has some challenges trying to make it to the Celebration Bowl in Atlanta. But one thing to say, it's been a joy to cover him. And what a great kid. I mean, you talk about humble, listens, focused. He's the total package. And if we don't get a chance to see him, I'll say it on air. There has been a pleasure to cover you over these past four years during your time at South Carolina State. And looking forward to seeing him suit up on Sundays as we get all kinds of movement before that play got underway. 
I think it's going to be a false start against the offense. Malik Mickle, one of that starting offensive line unit. So here's a question. You know, questions have to be answered during games like this. So Morgan State's defensive philosophy. Can they play that way throughout the conference? It's very aggressive. It's in your face. And you look at the score and you say, no, they got gashed. But look a little deeper underneath the numbers, and that defense put this offense in a position to win some football games. With a little bit better offensive performance, Morgan could be up by two touchdowns. Now giving Samuel a little bit of a breather is backup running back Jarius Jenkins and Jenkins goes for five on that play I, I know when you saw Morgan State's defense you're not used to seeing that no. <laughs> I mean up I grew in up in face. Chicago and saw the 46 of the 46. Bears but it it didn't even look like some of the formations I've seen yeah. them run today yeah, it was it was zero coverage man and they play a little bit of one coverage and you know I think you have to do that to cover up to try and make your defense more offensive but the question remains, can this offense score in conference play? They're going to have their struggles. Staley's going to have to pick up his game in a hurry. Another whistle as we have more movement down there in the interior. Now we have a timeout on the field of play. South Carolina State takes it until so they'll have two remaining. We're going to come over and talk things over with Buddy Pugh. And we'll come back after we take a short time out. Switching to Allstate is worth it. We get a good look at defensive line coach David Blanchard, one of the reasons for a lot of the success here defensively at Orangeburg. But seeing that it's a 35-14 game and Blanchard played when I played here at Howard, when I played at Howard. So he likes to remind me, well, Jay, we hit you pretty good down here. And they did. The worst loss I took as a college quarterback uh -huh. was here. Wow. 28 to 18. Okay. That's, okay. That's not so too Blanche, horrible. So, Blanche, but I got to call you out because he'll never forget that bump whooping me and my boys put on. <laughs> the next year when they came up to Howard, we're in the fourth quarter. I'm celebrating 30 nothing okay. over South Carolina State. Yes, Howard, <laughs> the academic boys, put it on the Bulldogs that miracle season. So, had to mess with Blanche. We've been talking about everything else this game. I, I, He's going to get on me later. I just can't <laughs> help but crack up at how you being from Howard talked about how long the grass was on the field and that one of your players uh, actually tripped in a, a hole and still on his feet. On that run play is number 32, Jarius Jenkins. I, I was comfortable in thinking he was down, but he kept going, picks up 14. Uh, you, you know Hall of Fame coach Willie Jeffers. Right. You've met him, right? Yes. Kind of that old school tradition, snake oil salesman. So we play, not only is the grass overgrown, the sprinklers come on in the middle of the game because we were speedy. They knew we were going to throw the ball, so they were trying to slow us down with thick grass, and the sprinklers came on during the game. And everybody has those stories. That's back when HBCU football was HBCU football. Sprinklers during the game. Home field advantage meant home field advantage. Did you get wet? <laughs> hmm? Did you get wet by yeah, the It was the other side of the field. Oh, so okay. they were anticipating that. Never on their side of the field where they got the ball. All right, we have whistles. And while we do, if you're tuning in to watch women's college basketball, Stanford against Oregon, uh, volleyball, I'm sorry. Volleyball. Basketball was written on my card. Not my fault. Volleyball. Everything, Sorry about that, folks. Everything's been a little loose tonight. Been a loose well, play game. Been loose. I've been loose. My mouth's been loose. <laughs> <laughs> They're just getting underway in that volleyball match on ESPN News. So you can catch that over there, you women's college volleyball fans. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, got basketball, uh, no, not quite started Yeah, yet. not quite yet. Not quite. We got a few months before that. You know, I should have picked that up, but, uh, you know, been a little loose tonight as we see it. And LeBron Morris, as we're inside of two minutes, coming to the near side, and South Carolina State just trying to run this one out. And uh, be interesting to hear what Coach Pugh has to say about his team's performance after a, what a strange game like we've seen tonight. What did he say two weeks ago? He's like, what do I got to do to get my offense to score some points? <laughs> but the defense can do it. And as we mentioned, if you take away a drop ball versus Southern University, the MIAC SWAC, which they would have won that game, and 
blowing was a 17 point lead versus North Carolina Central. Right. You know, A&T beat them, but A&T is going to be a lot of folks. But, you know, this South Carolina State team, the defense is just as good. They make the adjustments. Defensive coordinator Restivo does his job. And if you're Morgan State, uh, Coach Ferrier says these guys believe they, they haven't gotten too down on themselves yet. What do you think their mindset is after a loss like tonight? They got, they got some questions to answer, you know, and I think really at that quarterback position, is Staley going to be the guy? Do they believe in Staley? What does he bring to the table? I don't know if it fits. You know, they, they put a lot on that young man's shoulders, and they have not got the return on investment just yet. But if it depends on if you go online, some of the social media, they're like, what is going on with Morgan State? They didn't look good tonight. The defense did at times, but that was about it. Hey, the Mitch Trubisky or Trubisky era begins in Chicago. We'll be in the black and blue division for our week five Monday night football matchup. Vikings and Bears at Soldier Field. Our coverage begins with Monday night countdown served by Applebee's. Six Eastern on ESPN and the game also available on ESPN 2 in Spanish. Meanwhile, this game is over. South Carolina State runs it out. And the Bulldogs with 28 unanswered points get the victory. The score is 35 to 14. So South Carolina State, one that's seen uh, its share of strange plays, takes advantage and gets a much needed MEAC victory. That's it from Orangeburg, our final. South Carolina State 35, Morgan State 14. Now we send you to Eugene, Oregon for women's college volleyball. For Jay Walker, this is Eric Clemens. So long.